It's been nine months since Herky the Hawk went to work here inside Kinnick Stadium. It's been 11 since the Hawkeyes won here. But a new season is finally here. With it comes anticipation, confidence, and on this day, a BCS Bowl team from a year ago in Northern Illinois. Welcome to a warm Kinnick Stadium here on the last day of August, the opening day of the season. We are moments away from kickoff of the Hawkeyes and the Huskies. Welcome to the broadcast booth here at Kinnick Stadium alongside former Iowa receiver Danian Hughes. I'm Paul Burmeister. Chuck Long will be here momentarily. There is incredible excitement inside every single Big Ten Stadium right now, but some uh, extra layer of significance here in Iowa City because the opponents today won 12 games a year ago, and Dayton, the Iowa Hawkeyes, won only four. <laughs> well, a few years ago, Paul, well, you and I have talked about it. These two schools probably didn't anticipate, especially the Hawkeyes, that an FBS team would come in wow. and, and play them in the opening game. Now, the Huskies have been a strong program for several years. There's a lot of concern, but there's also a lot of excitement here in Kinnick. And one of the best quarterbacks in the nation playing for Northern Illinois today, that is Jordan Lynch. For the Iowa Hawkeyes, Jake Rudock may have a lot of intelligence. He has a lot of maturity, but he doesn't have a lot of experience. He will be making his first start here today. There's Kirk Ferentz, the dean of Big Ten coaches, as we await the Iowa Hawkeyes. The 2013 version of the Hawkeyes to take the field for the very first time. Kinnick Stadium as always on game day here in Iowa City. They have been anticipating this moment since the loss to Nebraska at Kinnick last year. All, all kinds of anticipation for the Iowa Hawkeyes in 2013. And Kirk Ferentz, the Dean of Big Ten Coaches, is set to lead his 2013 team out onto the field. players for the Iowa Hawkeyes day and it starts at quarterback Jake Rudock smart kid intelligent kid doesn't have any experience yet no experience at all making his first career start not since 1994 had there been a quarterback that came into this program without any game experience they have a lot on his shoulders but he has some weapons around him to make some plays Mark Weissman is one of those guys and bounced back off some injuries late in the season last year, but started very strong with 815 in rushing yards and eight touchdowns on defense. The leader, he's been here going in his fourth year starter, 
293 career tackles. James Morris has been outstanding throughout his career. He has a load on his shoulders as well as today with Jordan Lynch at that quarterback position. He has to do a lot to contain him. Iowa knocked off Northern Illinois by one point on opening day last year, Dane, and keys to victory today. Stay in the rushing lanes. They did an outstanding job last year against Lynch. They held him to 54 passing yards. He broke off one big run for a touchdown, but otherwise they did a very good job defensively disciplined and staying in their lanes. Offensively, they have to control the ball. They have to run the ball. They have to own the line of scrimmage, impose their will on their opponents, and establish that run game early and often. Take a listen to the national anthem here at Kinnick Stadium. Director of Bands, Dr. Mark Heidel. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. And we, we have a layer of new inside Kinnick Stadium here as we open up the 2013 season. They're right below the press box. You see the names and the numbers. That is the new Kinnick Stadium Wall of Honor. In the first class, nine going in. I'm looking all the way down there to the right, and I see number 16. Chuck Long had to be in the first class, and uh, he is still the man here in Iowa City. I heard the applause here moments ago when he stepped out onto the field. And Chuck with us now. And Chuck, before we get into the game, it's been a while since you've been on the field as a player. 1985 when you were first-team All-American. What was it like to be back uh, being honored by all these home fans here? Oh, just a great honor. I love the crowd. I love the fans here. I always have. As you know, Paul, you played here. We know the excitement here. But just to be a part of that nine-man group in the history of Iowa football, it really hasn't sunk in yet. But it's just a tribute to all the great teams that I play on, great coaching staff, and a golden age of Iowa football. Since now Kinnick won the award for Heisman Trophy in 1939, no player inside Kinnick Stadium has played the quarterback position better than Chuck Long. But number six, Jordan Lynch, is uh, he's expected to be awfully good today. He is. He's a, he's a great player, Paul. Everybody knows that. But he rushed for over 1,800 yards last year with 3,100 yards passing. No one's ever done that. And uh, here he is going in his last year. He's the guy to stop for Iowa. Dangerous player. His head coach is Rod Carey in his first year. The head coach for the Iowa Hawkeyes, the dean of Big Ten coaches, Kirk Ferentz. A little bit earlier, he spent time with the man on the sideline for us, Danon Hughes. Yeah, you know, we try to shut the door on that right after the season. We, we try to learn from it. Uh, there's some great teaching examples and moments, but, you know, really uh, the week after that last game, we encourage our players to look forward and do their best to prepare for this year. We, we did the same thing in 07. Uh, the guys have been great. They've worked hard. They've had a great attitude and eager to get on the field see how we look. Good luck, Coach. Thanks, man. Good to see you, huh? I'll tell you what, a day ago, it appeared there was going to be around 100 degrees here, but it's cooled down a little bit. Feels like 90 degrees in the stadium. It's actually 85. If you take everything into account, you say it feels like 90. A little bit of wind, 7 miles per hour. And it is warm, Chuck, but it's not nearly as warm as it could have been yesterday. Record highs in Iowa City yesterday, about 101 degrees. A lot cooler today, Paul, and that's, that's good. You know, those, the Iowa Hawkeyes have those black uniforms on, so it's going to be hot for them. 
Iowa Hawkeyes won the toss. They will receive. So, Chuck, we're going to get an early look at a big question here in Iowa City. How much better can the offense be this year, which really lacked explosion, lacked the ability to put points on the board last year? Well, it's going to be interesting, Paul, because they have a new quarterback in Jake Rudock. So he has not thrown a pass in a game. So they're going to have to rely on the, on the run game, which I think they're deep at running back there. They have to rely on that run game to get him started, to get this offense moving. Well, it's been a while, over 30 years, Chuck, since you made your very first start as an Iowa Hawkeye. I believe it was 1982. If you could give one piece of advice to Jake Rudolph here before he steps out onto the field, what would it be? His heart is beating really fast right now, <laughs> Paul. Take a deep breath, count to 10, just to relax as much as you can, and try to complete the first pass. That'll do wonders for your confidence as a first-time player. Back deep to receive for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Number three is Jordan Cotton. Iowa football in his family. You remember the name Marshall Cotton from the mid, early to mid 1980s. Short kick, and here come the Iowa Hawkeyes for the first time in 2013 out to the 30 yard line. And that's where Jake Rudock will begin. That's a return of 10 yards. Jake Rudock, third year in this program from St. Thomas Aquinas in South Florida. Not only starting his first game in Iowa, he's taking his first college snap. Emerged from spring football in a training camp battle with C.J. Beathard and Cody Sokol to be the starting quarterback. And the Jake Rudock era officially underway in Iowa City. Damon Bullock on the delayed draw up the middle for the Iowa Hawkeyes, and that is a gain of four. Bullock had a big afternoon last year in the season opener against Northern Illinois. 30 carries for 150 yards. You can take a look at the top left of the middle of your screen. The starting offense for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And we're seeing something new here, Chuck. We all expected it. We heard about it in spring football. The no huddle offense. Offensive coordinator Greg Davis telling us yesterday, we only expect to huddle up when we get to the goal line. Uh, just like Chuck asked for, that's a completion on his first time. Jake Rudolph to Kevontae Martin Manley. Short gain of only three. It'll bring up third down. A little pass to push right in the slot between the corner and the inside linebacker. There's ball. Good, good start for uh, Jake. Get him off the ground with the completion of the first pass. But getting back to no huddle now. They're trying to go fast this year in Iowa land. Let's see what happens. We already had a look at Damon Bullock, the tailback. We expect to see three tailbacks today. And the second one is Mark Weissman, number 45. He is lined up to the left of Jake Rudolph. Right up the middle there on the first down and 10, and he picks up one. Let's check in on the auto owner's insurance starting defense for Northern Illinois. As you look at the names that'll make up the Husky defense today, keep in mind the front seven last year, five of those players are gone. Three off the defensive line, two linebackers, so a lot to replace for the Huskies. The Huskies as they get to know their team today. Empty backfield for Rudolph, and quickly he throws to Hillier. Speaking of quickly, he is brought down right away after he hauled it in. Hillier picks up a game of four. Nice job with the blitz uh, uh, against the blitz. Northern Illinois brought some people there, and they went to a spread formation. You'll see it right here. Okay, spread formation. Nobody in the backfield. They had one extra guy, one extra defender. They couldn't block. Good job by uh, Jake getting rid of the ball before that defender got to him. Once again, empty backfield out of the shotgun on third and short. Three wide receivers to his right and two to his left. And Rudolph had that one knocked down, and out comes the punt team. So the Hawkeyes pick up one first down, Chuck, and uh, forced to punt it away here on the first series. At least they got the first first down. They needed that with a young quarterback. But they're, they're showing a lot of different things right now. No huddle, and all, they've gone empty already. And aggressive also with the pass. They weren't throwing it downfield a whole lot, Chuck, but they were coming out in passing formations with an empty backfield a number of times. One of the things you've you got to see as the game goes is they want... They want completions over 20 yards. Sebastiano back deep to receive the punt for Northern Illinois. Connor Kornbrath with the punt there, and the Iowa defense will step out onto the field. We are early in Iowa City at scoreless. This is our Autobahn. 
our formula track. Our oval. They can have the asphalt. We'll take everything else. Own the off-road with the Gator that's right for you. See them in action at johndeere.com slash gator. Hurry in to get $500 off select Gator utility vehicles at your John Deere dealer. The age of the oversized luxury car is about to give way to a smarter, more nimble breed. Introducing the all-new Buick Encore. With evolved features like flexible seating for five and IntelliLink. Clearly, the next big thing in luxury is small. You can purchase the right to buy face value tickets if your team makes it to the Big Ten football championship game. Guaranteed. For more information, go to btn.com slash team ticks. Weeknights, join the conversation on BTN Live. We ready for another week, guys? Yeah, absolutely. You bet. Another exciting week. It's the most comprehensive nightly college football discussion. Okay, I think that schedule lays out very well for them. If they don't get into the, to the championship game, this is going to be a disappointment for them. No question. From the guys who love to talk about the game. More than any other team that I watch, they know how to win the close game. BTN Live, weeknights at 6 Eastern on BTN. When the game is over, stick around for the State Farm Post Game Show. In-depth highlights from the entire conference and complete analysis from our Big Ten experts. The State Farm Post Game Show, immediately after the game, only on BTN. Football in BTN is presented by John Deere. The off-road just got roomier. The new Gator XUV 825i S4, now with seating for four. And brought to you by Case IH. Be ready with the proven leader. Visit CaseIH.com slash efficient power. Northern Illinois Huskies, a surprise team in the BCS last year after they lost the opening game to the Iowa Hawkeyes by one point in Soldier Field. They reeled off 12 consecutive victories, represented themselves well in the Oars Bowl against Florida State, although it was eventually, ultimately, their second loss of the season. What a season it was, 12-2. and two. And there's the man, Jordan Lynch. So many stories to tell with him. He throws it on his very first play here today, Jerron Brown. Out of bounds, that's Lynch to Brown for a gain of six. So Jordan Lynch ran out of the field last year against the Iowa Hawkeyes completely as an unknown, taking over for the Conference Player of the Year, Chandler Harnish, who went on to be drafted by the Indianapolis Colts. He is now the owner of 14 Northern Illinois records and four NCAA records after an incredible season last year. You see some of the strength right there as Lynch goes up the middle, breaks a couple of tackles, and that's the first Husky first down after a gain of nine. Look for Northern Illinois. Look for Northern Illinois to get the spread and run the ball. Not wasting any time there, Chuck. Less than 10 seconds in between plays. Tommy Lee Lewis has it out of the backfield or as a slot receiver, and that's a gain of two. And what we became used to when we were quarterbacks here, Chuck, and we were coaching at Oklahoma, where there were anywhere between 20 and 40 seconds between snaps. They can't run a snap quick enough. They, fast. They, they want to go as fast as possible. They will be much faster than Iowa today because they've been doing it. Lynch keeps it himself. This time, the Iowa defense is there to hold that to a gain of one. The Iowa linebackers are going to a lot of pressure today here, Paul, because they're going to spread those linebackers out try to put them in space. They have to cover a lot of space today with those Iowa linebackers, but they're a good three. They're a good trio back there. Northern Illinois facing third down and six. Empty backfield for Jordan Lynch in the shotgun formation. He has three wide receivers to his right and a pair to the left. Iowa Hawkeyes last in the Big Ten in sacks last year. Let's see what kind of pressure they can get now. Very uh -oh, little uh -oh. as Lynch fires across the field, and that is a missed opportunity for the Northern Illinois Huskies as Jordan Lynch threw across his body. Sebastiano couldn't hang on as the ball was thrown behind him, Chuck. But great time in the pocket, kept his eyes downfield, had a guy wide open. He just threw it outside of him a little bit, wasn't able to make the catch. But he was wide open in the secondary. He would have run a long way. Didn't have the accuracy he wanted to right there, Chuck. But you see the athleticism and also the arm strength firing that ball as he's falling away to the right. One of the most dynamic players in the country this year, Paul. Let's watch him this year. He's in the Heisman Trophy race. 
Back to receive for the Iowa Hawkeyes. The leading receiver back from a year ago, Kevontae Martin Manley. He has one catch today. Fair catch called for there at his own 26-yard line. Time now for the Quicken Loans quarterback comparison, and it's really quite a contrast, Chuck, when you look at Jordan Lynch, a legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate, and Jake Rudock starting for the very first time. Well, the experience factor with Jordan being a senior, look at his numbers there. Look at 27 touchdowns, six interceptions. What a great ratio. I think about 144 in pass efficiency on, on the year last year. And then you have Jake. He just had, he's, he's completed two already. Yes. So that, that number has changed. Both quarterbacks off to a similar start, even though their backgrounds are different coming into the game. Jake and Jordan both two for three. This is Mark Wiseman off the right side. And he picks up four. He, go ahead, Chuck. This is going to be a big, important series for Iowa, but all day long. They have, they have a size advantage. Offensive line versus Northern Illinois defensive line by 40 pounds on average. So they need to run the ball just like they did right there downhill. And no surprise when we talked to Rod Carey during the week, Chuck, the head coach in Northern Illinois, the former offensive lineman in Indiana, the former offensive line coach, he said this game is going to be all about up front. Which team is going to push the other one around? Keep an eye on that one. Hawkeyes facing second down and six. Wiseman still the tailback. They run it into the boundary. He's got a gap this time, and he also has Iowa first down. He is a horse, Paul, and he was on track to be one of the leading rushers in the country last year before he got injured. You can see his strength and power. Here he is just on an outside stretch zone play. Northern Illinois just got too wide in their gaps. They are out of their gaps and enabled uh, Wiseman to have a great run there. See how wide those gaps are right there? Someone should have come down from the safety position to make that play. Wiseman picked up 11. He gets a rest in now. Another tailback. They have a lot of confidence in, and that's number five, Damon Bullock. Bullock off the same play. He has the same crease, maybe even a little bigger. Wasn't touched until he picked up nine yards. Eventually, he gets ten. And the Iowa running game, the last of the Big Ten sprint rushing offense last year, off to a strong start. Same play, different back. Outside zone. Look at the gaps they're creating on Northern Illinois. They're just getting way too far out of their gas. Good job. One-two punch between Bullock and Weissman right now. Trying to beat the heat. The Iowa Hawkeyes show came out in that... Uh, no huddle, throwing the football a lot in the first drive. I'm reminded now what offensive coordinator Greg Davis told us. He said, don't forget about the identity we want to have. We want to run the ball first and foremost above the quarterback experience and all the formations, and we're seeing that there. We also see a big hit by the Northern Illinois defense, and that's only a gain of two. Good first down call, just a simple run. I've always believed, hey, don't. everybody wants to take the shot on second and short, second and one. But get the first down. First downs are hard to get. That philosophy, philosophy has switched somewhat in college football. Boomer Mays, number 45 right there, a sophomore middle linebacker. And the Iowa Hawkeyes coming out, running the football. So far, eight plays, six on the ground. And they've had three pass plays as well. Good plan so far for Iowa. Mark Weissman back in at tailback. The fake to him. Rudolph with a nice pocket. And how many times, Chuck, did you hear a quarterback coach, whether it was here in Iowa or in the NFL, say, don't throw late to the sideline? Well, it started with Hayden Fry, remember, right? Paul? <laughs> there it is. You cannot. Here he is in the pocket. Take your steps and throw. See, he hops twice there, Paul. You don't want to hop twice and throw late to the flat. And, hey, they're lucky they got that pass broken up instead of an interception. Intended receiver for the Iowa Hawkeyes, Jacob Hillier, that was broken up by Marlon Moore. But the conference, the MAC conference last year, passes broken up. Weissman to tail back on second down. And he is met and also puts the ball on the ground. Northern Illinois claims to have it. Weissman fumble, Husky football. Very, very rare turnover for Mark Weissman. And the 49, Jason Meehan pounces on that one. And the Huskies, who failed to create any turnovers against Iowa last year, they already have one. 918 left in the first quarter. Turnover leads to the Husky offense right after this. Hey, love. Hi, <laughs> love. Hi, love. Hi, Bamba.
people connect face to face on the iPhone than any other phone. I miss you. Imagine if you took the world's most advanced video game and used the technology to help improve safety on America's roadways. The National Advanced Driving Simulator, or NADS for short, at the University of Iowa is doing just that through a virtual experience unlike any other. We offer a place where any sponsor can come in and test vehicle technology, vehicle interfaces, and put people in near crash situations, but without actual harm to the people themselves. The facility is a collection of simulators, the most massive and impressive of which can reach speeds up to seven tenths of a G. We get the opportunity to study things which couldn't be studied in the real world. We're providing scientists with information that would be impossible to get otherwise. So there's no question that that would help other people and that would impact the future for everyone. Back in Iowa City, 918 left to Kinnick Stadium in the first quarter. We're scoreless. Iowa Hawkeyes last year, Chuck, plus 12 in the turnover game, but already today, negative one. That's been the best part of their game last year. If you're going to pin down anything that they did well last year, that was it. And that's a, but right here, they forgot to block the, the free safety coming down. They didn't have a hat for him on Durante, number one. That tight end's got to reach up and get that safety or bring another wide receiver. He just put his head right on the ball. That's usually results in a fumble. So this gives Northern Illinois quarterback Jordan Lynch an excellent chance here in the second series. He was the first player in FBS history last year to pass for more than 3,000 yards and also run for more than 1,500. Back to the air. He's now three out of four, and that's a Northern Illinois first down. Deron Brown hauls it in, turns up that left side, and that's a Husky gain of 14. Let's check in on the auto owner's insurance starting defense for the Iowa Hawkeyes. The priority number one stopping Jordan Lynch, but number two, finding pressure on that quarterback, an area they really struggled last year. Penalty marker is down to the 40-yard line. That's Tommy Lee Lewis out of the slot, taking it quickly. We'll check in on the penalty here. It could be a hold on the wide receiver. Usually that happens with bubble screens. That wide receiver gets engaged, grabs cloth in there, and forgets to let go. This is the second series for the Northern Illinois Huskies. Iowa has also had two series on offense. Five men in the backfield. Offense. Five yards penalty. Repeat first down. Had to figure that one out. Too many people in the backfield. That can happen in no huddle, Paul. It's getting lined up. Defenses have a hard enough time getting lined up, but sometimes offenses get caught too. Cameron Stingley, the tailback for the Huskies, the intended. Starting tailback, Akeem Daniels out with an ankle injury. And there's Stingley right up the middle. That's a whole lot of tailback for a gain of four. Listed at 244, but the coaches, when they talked to us during the week, impressed with how he's kept that weight down in the training camp. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good, when you have a, a training camp, you got to be careful about guys gaining way, too much weight with all that food that they eat. So it's always a battle. He's done a good job keeping his weight where it is. Sometimes that training table a little too welcome there after a long summer. Jordan Lynch sets an excellent catch as he fired it high. Juwan Braskison hauls it in very close to another Northern Illinois first down. That's a gain of 10. They, they must feel like Iowa's defensive line. Here's, here's the catch. It's just a little, little stop and slant pattern here. Good catch here. And Lynch keeps it himself that time. Anthony Hitchens, who led the Big Ten in tackles a year ago, there to stop him for no gain. And he is right at that first down marker is that was third and less than a yard. Here's your, here's your big call of the game right here on fourth down. First big call of the game. They're just, we're playing ball, they're going on. No hesitation whatsoever, they're going for it. Fourth down and less than a yard. Keith Harris Jr., the tailback. Defense in there tight now. They have everybody in the line of scrimmage. Call the timeout. Jordan Lynch and his Northern Illinois Huskies on the move, but facing fourth and less than a yard. It appears they're going for it. You can watch it on the other side of the screen. Wow! Your generator's really quiet! Yeah, it's a Honda EU2000. Super quiet. Fuel efficient and lightweight. Yeah! My generator's really loud! Yeah, no kidding. Oh, yeah! She wants me! 
Maybe not. Honda EU Series portable generators. Lightweight, fuel efficient, and... What was that all about? Very quiet. You can purchase the right to buy face value tickets if your team makes it to the Big Ten football championship game. Guaranteed. For more information, go to btn.com slash team ticks. You remember their days competing in the conference. Now, the BTN Original Series Forever Big reconnects with these former athletes for a view of life after the Big Ten. Forever Big, featuring Tony Mandrich and Brad Sellers. Premieres Friday on BTN. So Rod Carey, the head coach of Northern Illinois, changed his mind there during that timeout. It appeared the Huskies were going to go for it on fourth and less than a yard. Now Matthew Sims comes out to attempt a 47-yard field goal. He was six for eight in attempts between 40 and 49 last season. And no doubt about that one. Matthew Sims strong right down the middle. Plenty of leg, lots of accuracy from 47 yards out. So the Huskies turn the Mark Wiseman fumble into three points and take the lead 3-0 here in Iowa City. Good decision by Coach Carey. Being on the road, hey, get the points when you have a chance early, especially on the road. Big Ten Network goes where you want, when you want, with BTN to go, presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Watch every football game on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. BTN to go is now available to all major subscribers who receive BTN through their cable, satellite, or participating video providers. To learn more, visit btntogo.com. Also available in the App Store and on Google Play. And there is Kirk Ferentz, the dean of the Big Ten coaches. 15th season on the Iowa sidelines. Watching his Hawkeyes fall behind 3 to nothing. I think uh, Iowa just come, just come out here, same game plan, stay with it. You have a good running attack right now, Paul. Weissman and Bullock with a few sprinkle passes in between. Be ready, look for the shot coming up. They want that, that shot pass, that over 20-yard pass right now, as Greg Davis talked about last night with us. Called it the alumni ball. The alumni ball. Throw it up there deep and make everybody happy. Jordan Cotton from his own goal line. Scott brings it out to the 19-yard line. A return of 19 yards. So Jordan Lynch is off to a good start for the Northern Illinois Huskies. Three carries, 11 yards. He's also four out of five in the passing game. Out comes Jake Rudock, series number three, not only of the game, but also in his career as a college quarterback. The last drive ended when Mark Wiseman put it on the ground. The Huskies picked it up, and they went on to kick a 47-yard field goal. Damon Bullock, number five, is the tailback running out of the eye formation. Rudolph to the air off the five-step drop. Devontae Martin Manley open almost broke that one three right at the 30-yard line. Just enough for an Iowa first down. Gain of 11. The best play in college football in the passing game, Paul, is the old curl flat. Here's just a simple curl route. Nice job. Great execution. You talked about getting early completions for the young and experienced quarterback, and it looks like Greg Davis has the same thing in mind. That's Mark Weissman off the right side, picking up two yards. Nice plan so far by Coach Davis, the offensive coordinator for Iowa. He's doing a, protecting that quarterback in the throwing game is what I call it. Keep your throws outside the hash more than inside the hash. The inside the hash is the interception area. Keep him outside the hash. He's doing that with Jake right now. Rudock, tremendous success in high school at St. Thomas Aquinas. Led his team to a 15-0 record his senior season. District states and also a national title. Lost only one time in his high school career. That was Weissman off the left side, picking up five yards. Here's Greg Davis. He's done a good job, did a great job at uh, Texas. Some explosive offenses down there. He's had to get used to the Big Ten play, though, Paul, this past year. He's, he's, he's going into his second year. He took a year to, hey, just really understand the Big Ten and his personnel. And right now he has Damon Bullock to the right of Jake Rudolph. Third down and four. Huskies not showing blitz. They only rush four. Rudock stepping up. Good effort. Gets close to a first down. They needed four, and he got three. He took a shot there, and, and as he gets older in the system, you know, he's good in the pocket here. He's not making a mistake. He's 
taking, taking a hit right there. He'll learn, hey, don't take too many of those hits. Try to get down a little quicker. Number six is Jamal Bass, the third leading tackler for the Huskies last year. He's the leader in the middle there at linebacker. Cornbrath back to punt, but we do have a penalty marker down. Ball start. Offense, number 20. Five yard penalty. Repeat this is one of the things they were talking about last night is not no pre-snap penalties. Okay, that's one of the things with uh, coming out the first game. Our pre-snap penalties are a no-no, a coach's nightmare. Christian Kirksey there, one of the star linebackers from the Iowa Hawkeyes, lining up on special teams. And that Northern Illinois defense, three for three in stopping the Iowa drives. Getting a turnover on one, and Connor Kornbrath lost that one off the side of his foot, shanked it to the right. And for the second consecutive series, Jordan Lynch and his Northern Illinois Huskies set up in very good shape to start a drive. Huskies lead by three. Yes! That just happened! Yes, it did. <laughs> no! No! Yes, 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 yes! Later. Honey, who was that? Who, that guy? I don't know. Get caught up in the excitement. Buffalo Wild Wings. More wings, more sports. Hey, who's this? In this moment, it doesn't matter if you save money in 15 minutes. It doesn't matter if your neighbor has the same insurance that you do. What matters right now is the quality of your independent insurance agent and the company that stands behind them. Auto Owners Insurance. Tomorrow, it's a top 10 men's soccer showdown on BTN. The defending national champion and top-ranked Hoosiers square off with ninth-ranked UCLA in Bloomington. Don't miss men's soccer tomorrow at 2 Eastern on BTN and BTN to go. through Big Ten country? Make sure you don't miss out on anything happening in the conference. Go to btn.com slash hotels for a comprehensive list of hotels carrying the Big Ten network. Welcome back to Iowa City. The visiting Huskies on top right now, three to nothing. If you are looking for the Central Michigan Michigan game, go to btn.com slash game finder right now to see where you can find that game. Kirk Ferentz in his 15th season, 15th season as the Iowa head coach in his 24th season at Iowa overall. Spent nine seasons here in the 1980s as the offensive line coach. That is Jordan Lynch, a legitimate Heisman contender. Through the air and also on the ground. Has a gap off the right side, putting his head down. The Iowa defense there to close it quickly to keep that to a gain of four. Jordan's like a running back. When he, when he carries the ball, he doesn't. He doesn't care. He he'll he'll play smash mouth football with you. He doesn't want to get down. Puts those pads down. Tries to get the extra yard every time. Very tough kid, Paul. It presents a nice challenge for Rod Carey, the head coach. He, he would like to have him run it 45 or 50 times, but he knows he can't do that. So they're learning too right now. Who has earned their trust to take the carries besides Lynch? Good break for the Iowa Hawkeyes there as the shotgun snap went right through Lynch's hands. And that's a loss of 11 yards. And along that point, you just catch a call. Here, here's the... Well, looks like a good snap there. Just he has to catch the ball, keep his eyes on the ball. First things first. Here's a big play right now. A big third long. Here's where mistakes can happen. Expect the Hawkeyes to bring only four here, which they do. Lynch trying to set up the screen. The Iowa Hawkeyes have it sniffed out. Louis Trinka Passat knew exactly what was coming. He may have had his hands on Harris Jr. a little bit too early. That's a tough call because defensive linemen are taught to grab that running back coming out of the backfield, but 
They can't, they can't grab him for too long. Here's a little screen pass. Always a typical third and long call play. He actually played it really well for defensive lineman. Have, for a defensive lineman here, Paul. Yes, he did. He was right on it from the, from the get-go. Some indecision here on the call, but on the replay, once again, as Chuck pointed out, it appeared Lewis Trinkapasat, number 90 for the Iowa Hawkeyes, had his hands on Keith Harris Jr. a little bit too early. Trinkapasat's a meat and potato nine. guy for Iowa. Hard-working young man from Chicago, Illinois. They love him. Started all 12 games last year, has earned the teammates and the coaches' respect for his toughness. So it's not an automatic first down. Brings it up third down and seven. Empty backfield for Lynch. Plenty of time. Nobody open. Back across his body, and that's Jerron Brown right at the first down marker. Jerron Brown picked up seven yards on third and seven. That's where they're, he's dangerous. Uh, looks like Iowa now is only rushing four. That's why there's so much time. Offensive line does a nice job. He, of course, he has great escape ability, finds his man. They, Iowa probably needs to bring a little bit more blitz on that on that third down situation. They're and, just rushing four right now. And there's a reason why they're a little leery to play man, Chuck, because when you do that, you lose sight of the quarterback, and against Jordan Lynch, that's not a good idea. Once again, look at the time for Lynch. Looking deep, has a wide open Husky. Touchdown at Northern Illinois. Tommy Lee Lewis for six. Just a simple post pattern, and he wiggled it at the top. They're going fast right now. I was having a hard time getting a call in. And that's what happens against the no huddle offense. Remember now, these guys have been doing this for a number of years, how fast they're going. Great protection. Two-man route, simple post route, safety's not there. Tommy Lee Lewis had five touchdowns a year ago for the Huskies. He now has their first touchdown of the season. Lynch to Lewis from 40 yards out. Matthew Sims already has a field goal. He now has an extra point. And with 347 left, Rod carries Huskies on a 10 to nothing lead here in Iowa City. Let's go to Dave Revson in Chicago for a Big Ten Network game break. Okay, thanks a lot, Paul. It is going far better for Michigan against another MAC opponent in Central Michigan. Devin Gardner threw an interception deep in his own territory early in the game. Atones for that, can't find a receiver, and waltzes into the end zone. 15 3, Wolverine. Northern Illinois, back-to-back -back drives, putting points on the board. A 47-yard field goal just before a 40-yard touchdown strike from Jordan Lynch to Tommy Lee Lewis. Just a simple breakdown in the coverage, Paul. They just, it appeared that they just didn't get the call, or they got the call in, they couldn't get lined up fast enough against that vaunted, fast, no-huddle offense by Northern Illinois. As a result of that, there was no safety in the middle of the field. It was an easy completion. And you pointed out the fact that the Hawkeyes have been rushing only four, like they did on that touchdown pass. I asked the question prior to the game, can Iowa get more pressure on opposing quarterbacks, make them more uncomfortable than a year ago when their 13 sacks ended up last in the Big Ten? And the answer right now, it's early, but it's no. It's no, and that's going to be a, an issue with them all year, I think. They're going to have to find some secondary pressure or some or linebacker pressure as the year goes on. Jordan Lynch so far, six out of 779 yards and that one touchdown moments ago to Lewis Jordan Cotton bringing it out for the Hawkeyes trying to bring it around that right side and he doesn't even make it to the 10 yard line just before the 10 he goes down so Northern Illinois clicking on all cylinders nice job by their special teams right there this hey just stick it up north and south don't go sideways especially on kick return should never do it just follow you. There's no blockers out there. They had the wall going to the left, not to the right. He, he tried to beat him to the right with the speed, but there's too many players over there. Nice tackle by number 21, Marlon Moore, defensive back for Northern Illinois. So back come Jake Rudock, the Iowa offense. Limited success so far. And his tailback right now will be Mark Weissman. Tough field position here, Paul. Just inside their own 10, play action. Rudock has a man deep. Damon, Damon Powell, junior college transfer. 
Great call by Greg Davis. There's the shot we've been waiting for. He talked about it last night. And they need to get David Powell out there, one of the fastest young men on the team. Great, great protection and great play face. One on one, laid right out in the middle of the field. Powell got behind the defender. Great play call by Greg Davis, getting it out from that end zone. Powell averaged 30 yards per reception last year at Snow Community College. That was number one in the nation. And his first catch goes for 49 yards. Damon Bullock cuts it off inside. There's success in the ground game for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And Bullock picks up seven. Right back to the ground on a little stretch play. Wide those gaps defensively with a lot of space to run the ball. They're going fast right now, Paul. Hawkeye offense finding success now. 49 yards in the pass to Powell, then eight yards on the rush. And the Northern Illinois defense steps it up right there, making the tackle from his linebacker spot is Boomer Mays. Gain of only one. You'll notice on second down plays especially, they'll go a little bit faster than third down. Here, 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 and that, or here's the first down call. It's going to go a little bit slower. When they get to that second down call, especially second, medium, or less call, look for the Hawkeyes to go faster on offense. First down, Iowa. They continue to be on the move as they approach the Husky 30-yard line. Rudolph rolling to his right. Has it open. Cavante Martin Manley just overshot him. Looked like he could have got rid of that one. Maybe a hair sooner while he was still in bounds. Just a tad late, but I like the play call again. They, they're rolling the pocket here. Here's a roll of the pocket. Just get him on the edge a little bit. You're right, Paul. Just a little quicker on your, on your release. Get rid of the ball a little faster. He'll learn that as time goes on. But he put in a spot, hey, our ball or nobody's right, ball? Exactly. Our ball or nobody's ball? Good good ball placement. Still pretty good touch pass. And we, we talked about the confidence Kirk Ferentz has in his running backs to go three deep. We've seen Bullock. We've seen Weissman. And for the first time, number 33 is Jordan Kanziri. Big Rudolph underneath. And the North Illinois defense doing a nice job there, stepping it up. Those wide receiver that screens, no gain. those wide receiver screens, Paul, are, are feast for family. <laughs> they go for nothing or they go for a big play every time. That was a nothing play, but you have to run it. What it's, it's designed to get those defensive linemen going sideways and get them tired out. So that may pay off for them down the road if they, if they work a few more of those. First catch there of the afternoon for Riley McCarron out of Dubuque Wallard. And Jake Rudock now four out of eight for 71 yards. Jordan Kanziri still the tailback. He is to the left of Jake Rudock. Daniel DeMarcus come down. False start. Offense, number 70. Five-yard penalty. The pre-snap penalties. Third. They hurt. They crush coaches more than any other thing in football. Before you snap the ball, when you get a penalty. Now you have a third long situation. The key here is to try to at least get field goal range. Get your points. So... They may throw an underneath pass or whatever. This is where you coach the quarterback. Hey, don't, if it's not open all the way down the field, dump it off. Let's get at least field goal range. Third down and 15 for Jake Rudock, who is now five out of eight. Stepping up into a nice pocket and delivering just missing. Iowa Hawkeyes almost had a big connection there. That's C.J. Fedorowicz, the tight end they expect big things from in 2013. They decided to go four verticals here, okay? The running back could not get out for the dump. That's not a bad throw there. I like that throw. That's yeah. an aggressive shot That's down the field. That's a good shot, right. And just like you pointed out with the pass to Martin Manley a moment ago, a tight window, but he put it in a spot where only his guy could get it. He did. But now they're in a situation where they're out of field goal range, okay? They could have dumped it down and gotten something quicker to get him in field goal range, but now they're going for it. Interesting. It would be a 53-yard field goal attempt, but they go for it on fourth and 15. Rudolph again, well protected, looking for Jacob Hillier. There was some contact there, but the ball floats out of bounds. No penalty marker. The ball's going to be turned over on downs. Uncatchable ball is what they're saying. The ball flowed out of bounds. It was an uncatchable ball. That's a, that's a good no call here. Certainly contact, but as Chuck pointed out, an uncatchable football there. As Rudock looked for Jake Hillier on fourth down in 15. Side judge knew it. He threw his hat off. They throw the hat off. That means, hey, ball's out of bounds. Can't catch the ball. You can make all the contact you want, but you have to keep the ball in bounds. So Kirk Ferentz saw that drive start very well for Iowa. Jake Rudolph, 49 yards up top. 
to Damon Powell. His first catch is a Hawkeye. But the ball goes back to Jordan Lynch, and there goes number six, spinning and running strong, picking up just over 10 yards for another Northern Illinois first down. Well, it's been all Jordan Lynch, Paul. Have we seen another guy touch the ball maybe once? Right. He, they want the ball in his hand. And, and Coach Kerry was talking about, very interesting, we're trying to find ways to get the ball out of his hand occasionally to save him through the course of the game and season. So far, it's been all Jordan Lynch. Jordan Lynch on the ground, also through the air. Very efficient. He's six out of seven for 79 yards. His coach is telling us they want him at 70% this year. And he's getting that done right now. Tommy Lee Lewis had the touchdown a moment ago. Tanner Miller gets him just as he hits that midfield stripe. And Lewis picks up three yards. Just as we talked about the size and strength of Iowa's line versus the uh, Northern Illinois' line, Northern Illinois has the speed advantage in this game. So it, it's a good cat and mouse game between the size for Iowa and the speed for Northern Illinois. As expected, Jordan Lynch leading the way on the ground and in the air so far for Northern Illinois. Facing second down six right now. Makes the inside give. He was rushed, but gets that one off. Big hit, and Christian Kirksey has the hit. Now the football. No flags. Touchdown, Iowa. Huge defensive play. They needed that right now, Paul. Great play, great hit. Is this a little flat pattern? Jordan Lynch probably shouldn't have thrown the ball. The one thing, the one thing he's got to do is look out in front of your receiver so he doesn't take the big hit. Nice pressure. Made him get rid of the top as fast as he wanted to. Great hit by Kirksey. Picks it up. Finishes the play himself. Highlight real play for Christian Kirksey. Not only the big hit to knock it loose, Chuck, but the awareness to scoop it up and sprint. And that's how Kirk Ferris Hawkeyes score for the very first time this season. Defense needed that. You know, they struggled last year, and they needed something like that positive to ha happen for them. And those are the types of game changers that... Nice shot. Made, pressure made Jordan Lynch throw too early. He couldn't see the defender in front. Kirksey has a great collision, great tackle, picks it up. You can see the speed that he has. I really like him. He's 95 tackles last year. Two sacks, two interceptions on the year last year. Starting off well this year. Rod Carey, the head coach for the Huskies, talking to the officiating crew. I, I wonder if he's if he's asking just to be sure. Was there was that an actual catch before the ball came out? Did he right. have it for long enough? We'll find out. I couldn't tell from our angle. So the Husky sideline questioning if the completion was truly a completion. Oh, There's the catch, and there's oh. a couple of steps. He took a couple of steps. That's a fumble. And 83 is Luke Ekus, the tight end. And the St. Mary's Kansas, you see it again right here. There's a catch. He secured it. Made that football move upfield. I would call that a fumble. Usually, if they don't stay on the headset long, it's right. they'll, they'll, keep, they'll keep the call. Review of the ruling on the field is confirmed. Northern Illinois is charged the timeout. So the Huskies challenge it. They lose a timeout. They don't get another challenge. And Christian Kirksey, last season, Chuck, you pointed out that he had two interceptions. He also he had two pick sixes. So th this is a guy used to getting that football in the end zone. He likes the end zone. The scoop and the score from 48 yards out. Myers up and in. And the Iowa defense puts the Hawkeyes on the board. It's the senior linebacker, Christian Kirksey. He felt the pressure. He could not see the defender in front of his tight end there on the bootleg. Great pressure really caused this play. And Nate Meyer with the pressure there, Chuck. Yeah. And they wanted Nate, to, they think Nate's one of their best pass rushers on their team, so they're putting him in on those long, those, those, uh, third down situations trying to get him to rush the passer 
<laughs> Kirk Ferentz arrived in Iowa City in 1981 as a 26-year-old offensive line coach. 24 seasons at Iowa later. That's nine as an offensive line coach. Came back 10 years later to be the head coach. That is the dean of Big Ten coaches. And he has something in common with Chuck. 1981, his first season here was also your first season. We were recruited together by Hayden Fry. <laughs> were you the bigger recruit? <laughs> no, he was. <laughs> he, he really uh, turned the fortunes of, around with the offensive line at Iowa. Came in with some great technique. Part of the Dan Marino, Jimbo Culvert days at of Pitt. Pitt. Yeah. Some great uh, lines at Pitt. And they really were ahead of the game in offensive line play. That's why Hayden researched it, went out, found the best one, and found Kirk Ferentz. And the legends, uh, the story goes that I think Kirk lied about his age just to get the job. <laughs> but, but hey, we were so glad and uh, thankful that we got Kirk in the, in the program because he really did a, a great job with the offensive line and still doing a great job. And amazing, he was just 26 years old in that first season as the offensive line coach in Iowa in that 1981 team that won the Big Ten Championship and played against Washington in the Rose Bowl. Let's check in on the sideline with Dana Hughes on a very hot afternoon here in Iowa City. Hey, thanks, guys. I'll tell you what, down here on the field, you see the heat on the on the field as far as Christian Kirksey and his athleticism, but there's a lot of heat literally on the field. Game time temperature was around 90 degrees. On field, they expected it to be around 100, but the turf under our feet, 163 degrees during game time. So. Each team is paying special attention to the players on the sideline, getting them hydrated. But it's good to see the big plays being made out on the field. A tale of two games in some aspects where they, both teams started off relatively safe. And now the Hawkeyes turn around and make big plays just like the Huskies. Big play right there, dated by Jordan Lomax. The sophomore corner bringing down Jordan Lynch for a loss of one. Today's sideline reports are brought to you by Best Buy. Christian Kirksey with the fumble return for a touchdown. It is his birthday today. You get the big hit, you get the football, you score. It's a nice birthday present right there. So that does it for the first quarter. Northern Illinois scores with a field goal and also a touchdown pass from Jordan Lynch to Tommy Lee Lewis and the Iowa defense coming through for the home team. Christian Kirksey with the big hit, the scoop, and the score. At the end of the first quarter, it's 10-7 Northern Illinois. On May 6, 1985, identical twins were separated at birth. Despite their different upbringings, they were both born to assist. Chris Paul was destined for a life of basketball. Cliff Paul was destined for a life of helping others, and that led him to become a State Farm agent. When assisting is in your blood, you know it. Find an agent born to get you to a better state. Northern Illinois University. Grit. Determination. Tenacity. We are Huskies. Champions. In the classroom. In competition. In life. We are Northern Illinois University. Learning today. Leading tomorrow. The Ohio State University. The University of Texas Southern University. California, Berkeley. Old Dominion University. Harvard University. The University of Virginia. The Texas State University. Norfolk State University. Virginia University. Arizona State. Pennsylvania State University. The few, the proud, the Marines. Every girl needs a strong female role model. For me, my mom is my rock. Field hockey is my passion, and my mom was the perfect person to emulate. In the early 80s, she helped turn the field hockey program into a national powerhouse. Now, I'm building my own legacy here, and these experiences will make our bond even stronger. Remember their days competing in the conference. Now, the BTN Original Series Forever Big reconnects with these former athletes for a view of life after the Big Ten. Forever Big, featuring Tony Mandrich and Brad Sellers. Premieres Friday on BTN. 
America's new sports network is here. Fox Sports 1, with live sports like Major League Baseball, Unbelievable. college football, UFC, college basketball, NASCAR, and more. Original shows like Crowd Goes Wild, Fox Football Daily, and Fox Sports Live, the news and highlight show fans have been waiting for. Get the last word before your team is ready for game day as we break down every big matchup and take you on campus for the latest updates. The BTN Football Report, presented by 5-Hour Energy. Friday, only on BTN. The Final Drive, tonight on BTN. We are all set to begin the second quarter here in Iowa City. Northern Illinois on top 10 to 7. Tonight in primetime, Taylor Martinez and the Nebraska Cornhuskers kick off the season against Wyoming. Tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern, presented by Buick on BTN and also BTN to go. It's the first play of the second quarter. And the Huskies pick up seven. In that first quarter, Jordan Lynch was seven out of eight, carried it six times for 25 yards. His counterpart, Jake Rudock, in his very first start. Not bad, 5 out of 10 for 71 yards. Keith Harris Jr. is the tailback for Lynch. This is a third down and four situation. Empty backfield now for Lynch. Four eligible receivers to his right. He wants to go to his left. And that's a perfect touch pass to Deron Brown. He couldn't come down with it. That's a great throw right there over the outside shoulder there, Paul. Nice throw. That's where you want to throw the ball. That's the hardest ball to defend. Needs to come up with that football. That was a big third down play. Now that, hey, Iowa has a little juice right now, getting them off the field. To see if they can take advantage. Interesting formation there, Chuck, with the four wide receivers to the right and just the one to the left. Well, what they try to do is take the defense and... and Push him towards that four wide receiver and go one on one to the single receiver into the boundary. Shorter throw, and you're one on one when you get in that formation. Timeout. Northern Illinois. Timeout call. They're Northern third. Illinois can use it there on that punt. And they have zero timeouts left. Ron Carey can't be too happy about that. Let's go down to the sideline and check in again with David Hughes. Well, guys, down here on the field, you, like you just said, there's a lot of confusion going on. We had a few timeouts that are called, earned timeouts early in this ball game, trying to iron out the wrinkles in this first game for both teams. But in that last play, like you guys said, you try to isolate one side of the field. Jordan Lynch threw a dime right down the side sideline in the box. The wide receiver should make a play. But clearly the momentum is now back on the Hawkeye side as they were able to get that three and out. Hey, Dana, as I was getting ready for this game, I mean, I was clearly impressed with what I saw from Jordan Lynch on film and also what I read about him. But you can really only tell what kind of ball a quarterback throws if you're down there on the field with him. You did it at a high level here, catching the football, and also in the National Football League for six seasons. What kind of arm strength does this kid have? Oh, he can make all the throws. And what I see most about him is his patience in the pocket. He's done a very nice job of moving to buy time, not just moving to make plays, but buy time to throw the ball and throw his receivers open, recognizing the coverage, that last pass down the sideline, Clearly confidence in his wide receiver one-on-one -on -one against any defensive back. All right, Dana Hughes, thank you. We look forward to more conversations with you from the sideline here throughout the next three quarters. Cavante Martin Manley, fair catch at the 34-yard line. Kirk Ferentz will get his offense set. We'll take a break. It'll be Jake Rudolph and the Iowa O right after this. Hey, give it back. Come back when we have a team. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Touch or touch? 
Gather your team, the new seven passenger Santa Fe. Strong storm. Z left flank. 18 slant. 499 Oscar. Let's face it, football is complicated. This stuff isn't easy. He runs a 16 Center yard in cut. Too. A high corner route. You're going to pull your guard around. They're going to start inside <laughs> and read the secondary. Block back with the centers. If that's muddy, we're going to outflank it this way. In, under, check down. From the pregame show to the final drive. BTN definitely has you covered. Jack Link's Beef Jerky presents Messing with Sasquatch. Jack Link's Jerky, feed your wild side. Tuesday night, our panel of Big Ten insiders debate the hottest issues in college football and discuss how the nation's biggest stories impact the conference. Big Ten football and beyond, Tuesday at 7 Eastern, only on BTN. What I love about football is raw emotion. It's like electricity, it courses through your body. The contact, you can go full speed at somebody and really not get in trouble. pumping, 80,000 fans cheering for you. If you don't get jacked up to play in front of those fans, you got a problem. Presenting the Buffalo Wild Wings Big Ten Football Championship Sweepstakes. You could be on your way to Indianapolis for the 2013 Big Ten Football Championship game or win one of a number of other great prizes. Register today at btn.com slash sweepstakes. College football on Big Ten Network is brought to you in part by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. The search for Sasquatch is on at a Big Ten or at Big Ten stadiums throughout this 2013 college football season. Log on to jackslink.com to see actual footage of Sasquatch roaming around your favorite campus. It's true, Chuck. He's here. Can you see him? <laughs> that was him. And that's for Jake Rudock missing, uh, looking for Weissman there in the flat. There he is. It's got to be. It's it's a warm day to be Sasquatch. That's it right. might be good to be him in November. That's a tough maybe job. Maybe October. That's a tough job right there, Paul. Would Dana say it was 163 <laughs> on the turf today? Maybe they're going to rotate Sasquatch out. You know, have a couple of them. Ooh, I hope at the very least he's staying hydrated. Jake Rudock right now five out of 11 for 71 yards. Damon Bullock has run it five times for 25, and Mark Wiseman six times for 23. This is second down 10. Bullock is the tailback behind Rudolph. Swings it out wide quickly. Number 17 is Jake Hillier, and that's an Iowa gain of eight. Good little wide receiver screen there. Just a two-man game on the outside. We used to call that an extension of the run game. It's just, take, think about your power sweep back in the day, Paul. That's just a wide power sweep, but you're throwing it out there. Jacob Hillier had only one catch last year in his career, and he already has two today. That was a game of seven. Now you're in a manageable third down. They have to stay ahead of the chains. This is not an explosive offense, but they need to stay ahead of the chains, which they are right now. They're in a manageable third down. Third down and a long two. Rudolph to the end. Good decision, good strike to Martin Manley. First down Iowa inside of Northern Illinois territory. And that's a gain of 14. We call this a bunch formation. A motion to a bunch formation to run a little triangle pit play. It's illegal. It's not an illegal pick. They just kind of, we call it a rough play. Nice little pop over the ball for a third down completion. Like the trust there in the young quarterback on third down and short. And also like the fact they put a receiver right in front of them. And the veteran Martin Manley. First down and 10 for the 44. Damon Bullock finding space and putting his head down off that left side, and he picks up eight yards. Great first down call. You're trying to get four yards. They got eight. Just a, just a little uh, zone play inside. Look at all the space on the North Illinois. They're, this is what they want to do is pound that defensive line. Bullock remains the tailback now on second down and two. Again, Bullock with 30 carries last year against Northern Illinois, picking up 150 yards in what turned out to be his best game. Cutting it back there. 
And the North Illinois defense, nice job of scratching it out. Same play. Exact same play inside zone, North Illinois. Hey. They brought a safety down. They brought their safeties a little bit tighter, which forced Bullock to go backside. And I, was, I would put that on Bullock. Don't go backside like that. Stay front side. Don't be patient. He got impatient there, Paul. George Rainey made the tackle to the quality role player here for the past couple of seasons. Now his first time as a starter. This is third down and less than a yard. Give it to Weissman. First down, Hawkeyes, and then some. Nice tackle there by Deshaun Durant, but not until Weissman picked up 11 yards and another Iowa first down. Give it to the big man. Again, this is getting back to, hey, 40 pounds difference up front. Just pound the ball. And you see the tackle there. That's the, with the new tackling rule, you're going to see a lot of more of those nice tackles there, Paul, instead of staying up. Iowa run game leading the way here as Iowa moves deeper into North Illinois territory. First down. Back to the ground again. That's Weissman. Much less on the production that time. As he picks up two, let's send it down to Dana. Hey, guys, you talk about the offensive line, specifically the run game in this drive. The Hawkeye offensive line, Brandon Scherf, Connor Bofelli, Austin Blythe, Jordan Walsh, Walsh, and Brett Van Sloten. They combined for 1,500 pounds, average of 300 pounds per offensive liner. Conversely, the Huskies' defensive line, they outweigh them, their five guys, by 246 pounds, a whole nother guy. That's going to be an impact today for the Hawkeyes because those big bodies leaning on the smaller bodies in this heat could be a factor. Mark Weissman. Look at the strong running there inside the 20-yard line. That was his eighth carry, and he picks up five. And I think because of what Dane had mentioned, because of what Kirk Ferentz really likes to do there, Chuck, run the ball, we're seeing a lot more rushing than passing from the Iowa offense. Uh, I was trying to bring an extra man to the weak side of the formation, so they have an extra man on Northern Illinois. Northern Illinois is not adjusting to that right now. That's why they're getting the yards. And also the power of Weissman. Jake Rudock with 13 passes right now, and Weissman and Bullock combining for 15 carries. And David Bullock back in the game. And that's a nice tackle there by Jimmy Ward, the leader for Northern Illinois. But it's a gain of four. You see the sticks move. First down, Iowa. Zone left, zone right. Zone left, zone right. That's what I was doing right now. Again, bringing the extra guy across the formation to get out to outnumber the North Illinois defense. You're doing a nice shot. This is a big drive for Iowa, Paul. They need to score seven points here. They went to the pass on third down and two to pick up the first down, but it's been all run since then. Bullock might have had a chance to bust that one outside. But Santa Catarina, the linebacker, with a shoestring tackle to keep that to a gain of one. Same outside zone play, but from the shotgun. Good mix of plays in the run game, just putting the or the same plays in the run game, just putting the running back in different positions to run it. Good job by uh, offensive coordinator Greg Davis. And since on third and two earlier in this drive, Chuck, when they went to the air to pick up the first down, it's been seven consecutive run plays. Here comes a blitz. And there's a pass. Easy completion, but a nice job with the defense. Excellent tackling there by Deshaun Durant. And that's a gain of four. Don Schumper with his first catch of the afternoon. Iowa's got to be much better in the red zone this year, Chuck. We knew that coming in. We heard the coaches talk about it yesterday. A year ago against Northern Illinois, they made four trips inside the 20-yard line and didn't score a single touchdown. Sore spot when we talked to Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator, uh, last night. That's one of the things he talked about, and they've emphasized it all camp. Needs to pay off on the field. Third down and six, Iowa three out of six on third down so far today. Big hit by that Northern Illinois front four. That induces the incomplete pass, and that's George Rainey putting the pressure on Jake Rudolph. Jake's in the pocket here. He's just looking for a little crossing route. He held the ball a little bit too long, but I, I believe the, uh, the, his receiver is coming open here across the middle. That's too bad. Just needed a little bit longer block to make that play. It's one of those, hey, I got him open. Uh, oh, he gets hit. And what's every defensive coordinator want to do? Let's get pressure with four. And the Huskies are doing that right now. Just sneaking that inside is my 28-yard field goal. And we have 8.24 left in the second quarter. We also have a tie ball game at Kinnick Stadium. 
Harnessing the power of the peanut is about accepting the gifts that nature gives us. Oh, okay. I'm sitting on six essential nutrients up here. And protein. Yeah. yeah! Those are just facts. I'm just saying facts with my face right now. But you gotta eat the peanut to pick up what I'm laying down. Look under your seats. Oh, look, a gift from nature. It tastes good. Oh, you like that? Let's get wholesome up in here. Woo! Boom! Make it rain, dog. Tomorrow, it's a top 10 men's soccer showdown on BTN. The defending national champion and top-ranked Hoosiers square off with ninth-ranked UCLA in Bloomington. Don't miss men's soccer tomorrow at 2 Eastern on BTN and BTN to go. Whether you're planting, spraying, or harvesting, there's nothing more important in farming than getting it right from the start. At Case IH, we got our engines right the first time. With our SCR technology that maximizes horsepower while meeting tough emission standards. While other companies are switching technology, Case IH already has over 30,000 proven engines in the field. The world of farming is changing. Be ready with a proven leader in efficient power. Case IH. The Final Drive, tonight on BTN. Monday. Don't miss the show that presents a fun-filled view of everything happening on and off the field, throughout the conference, and around the country. Rick Pizzo hosts the Big Ten Pulse, presented by Micro Essentials, Monday on BTN. One in six people in America may not know where their next meal is coming from. That's 50 million adults, children, and seniors who are struggling with hunger. Join Fox Sports and support Feeding America, a nationwide network of food banks, to help make sure every family has enough to eat. Go to feedingamerica.org slash Fox Sports to learn how you can help solve hunger in your community. Together, we're Feeding America. You can purchase the right to buy face value tickets if your team makes it to the Big Ten football championship game. Guaranteed. For more information, go to btn.com slash team ticks. The Iowa Hawkeyes making their way back here inside Kinnick Stadium. The first game of the season for Iowa and Northern Illinois. The Huskies jumped out to a 10 to nothing lead. Christian Kirksey, big hit, fumble return for a score, made it 10-7. And moments ago, 13 plays, 55 yards, ending with a 28-yard field goal by Meyer. And we are all tied at 10. Nice drive for Iowa there. They had to get some offensive points on the board in this first half. Hopefully it may give a little juice as the game goes on. Paris Logan back to receive for Northern Illinois. Takes a knee and he'll come out to the 25-yard line. Time now for today's United States Marine Corps leader of the game. And there is the man right there. James Morris out of Solon High School. Just up the road in Solon, Iowa. On the field, off the field. Hard to find something wrong with James Morris. He was a great running back in high school. You know, state champion at the Solon. His father is the head equipment uh, man here at Iowa, Greg Morris. Uh, solid young man. The undisputed leader of their defense. Tim Dwight, 93, 94. Tavian Banks in the same era. Excellent high school players. I think since then, that's the most successful individual in Iowa high school football since Tim and Tavian. Nice job on the Iowa defense. Throwing down Jordan Lynch in the backfield. Dominic Alvis, big number 79, for a loss of three. They're starting to control the line of scrimmage now. You see no movement at all by the Northern Illinois offensive line on that big defensive line. Dominic had five tackles for loss last year, now has one this season. Brings up second down, 13. Lynch with the pump and also plenty of time. Wanted Tommy Lee Lewis. Ball's incomplete, and that'll be third and 13. Great throw by Jordan Lynch. Tommy Lee needs to come up with that football. That was a nice throw between two defenders. Stuck that one in there. He just sure did. Jordan Lomax, that's pretty. Nice ball. Iowa defensive coordinator Phil Parker thinks this is prettier, though. Third down and 13. Crowd on its feet here at Kinnick Stadium. As Iowa has erased a 10-point deficit to make it all tied at 10. Hawks bring the blitz now. Anthony Hitchens got there in a hurry. Loudermilk was there with the coverage. Nice play. Excellent defense, and it's fourth and 13. Good, good blitz call by uh, defensive coordinator Phil Parker. They're not a, they're not a heavy blitz team so far. They brought it right, right 
time there. You just don't have enough guys to block. And George knew that. He's, play, he's faced that play. He had to get rid of the football a little bit earlier than he wanted to. Nice pressure there without hurting the quarterback either. You got to watch that helmet now. That's close. That's yeah. close. That's close. Hitchens made him throw it earlier than he wanted. Also a textbook breakup there by the safety, John Loudermilk, the strong safety, making his first start for the Iowa Hawkeyes. It'll be a delay a game. Delay a game. Offense, number 26. Five-yard penalty. The down remains four. Huskies moving even further back inside their own territory. After the Iowa defense stepped it up there on the last drive. Kevontae and Martin Manley now on the 45-yard line. The Iowa Hawkeyes with an excellent chance to have good field position after they tied the game at 10. Nice punt. Martin Manley at his own 35. And that's where Jake Rudolph will take over. At the top of the broadcast, we pointed out how inexperienced he was. In fact, not only never started the game, never took a snap at the college football level. He's been solid. 8 out of 15 for 95 yards. Ran the ball one time for three. And Chuck, he hasn't been, uh, I mean, that was an explosive play. I wouldn't describe his play as explosive so far, but he's made good decisions. For the most part, thrown it accurate. Accurately, and hasn't uh, turned it over yet. And he's not beating his own team. You just mentioned no turnovers. That's the big thing for a young quarterback going into his first start. Don't beat your team with turnovers. He's doing a good job of that. First down and 10 from the 35. Weissman, the tailback. Flea flicker. And Iowa has a wide open. Jordan Cotton, Cotton with the football, down to the 12-yard line. That's a, that's a good take-a-shot area right there in the field for Iowa. Coming out on offense, great flea flicker play, especially because of the run game. Sucked all those safeties up there. The whole back end near the line of scrimmage. Yet Jordan got wide open. Nice play call by offensive coordinator Greg Davis. Yeah, that's just smart after they ran seven consecutive times, Chuck, on the last drive. They knew the Huskies were thinking about the run. That's excellent play call and also execution as Weissman goes for one yard. Yeah, as you mentioned, run, run, run. Now you had the big shot. We're really setting up the place for, for uh, down the road in this football game from the series before. Then they go to the next series and throw the flea flicker. But they're changing the field position, which they need to do. I was not a long drive type of team, you know, from the minus 20 all the way down. So plays like that changes the field position. Here they are knocking at the door. Jordan Cotton, state champion of the 400-meter hurdles in his time at Mount Pleasant High School here in Iowa. Play action to Weissman. And Rudolph waited to the last possible second and just got rid of that one. Good that, that's a smart thing to do. Yeah, good throw away. When you're out of the pocket, you can throw the ball anywhere as long as it's across the line of scrimmage. There doesn't have to be a receiver in the vicinity when you're out of the pocket. That's smart play. And we pointed out a little bit ago, Chuck, that the red zone was an issue last year against Northern Illinois. Four trips inside the 20. Didn't score a touchdown. They had one trip inside the 20 previously here today. Didn't come away with a touchdown. That led to a field goal moments ago. And right now it's third down and nine. From the 11 yard line. That's a man coverage. Pocket for Rudolph. Into the end zone. Touchdown. CJ Fedorowicz. He threw it up right to the big guy. Just playing basketball. He just blocked the defender out. Gave him a big target. Nice touchdown throw. Put the ball where only Fedorowicz could catch it. Good job getting off his feet, making the play. And I was thinking about Jake Rudolph making his first start here today, Chuck, and the, the kind of weapons he had. I thought about that 6 7 tight end. And if I'm making my first start, I'd like to have that guy right in front of me, about 10 yards down the field. And we saw it right there for his first catch. Hawkeyes leading for the first time today after falling behind 10 to nothing. They now lead 17 to 10. CJ Fedorowicz now has at least one catch in 19 consecutive games. The Iowa Hawkeyes have a seven point lead. Even a high-efficiency dishwasher can't remove spots from your glasses if you have hard water, but a Culligan high-efficiency water softener can. 
It saves you up to 46% on operating costs. For 100% beautiful glasses, just say, hey, Culligan Man. Why does Bo Jackson use 5-Hour Energy? The reason I take 5-Hour Energy is because it gives me everything I need to get me over the hump. I don't have the energy that I used to have. I tried one right before going out golfing with some buddies. We only played 18 holes, but I could have played 36 that day. Being in the business world now, you're always running somewhere. If I need some pick-me-up, I get a five-hour energy. Gets me through the day. That's all I need. I'm Bo Jackson, and I use five-hour energy. It's time to demand more. With Micro Essentials, you get more from every acre. Through our fusion technology, only microessentials combine four vital nutrients into one powerful granule, ensuring uniform nutrient distribution and increased nutrient uptake. The innovation behind our fusion technology means you'll grow stronger, healthier plants. Microessentials, get more from every acre. What I love about football is raw emotion. It's like electricity, it courses through your body. The contact, you can go full speed at somebody and really not get in trouble. Right up the middle, goodbye! Your heart's pumping, 80,000 fans cheering for you. If you don't get jacked up to play in front of those fans, you got a problem. Culligan's drinking water system uses four filters to turn ordinary tap water into great tasting bottle quality water for just pennies a glass and you never run out. For this special offer, call and say, hey, Culligan man. Football on BTN is brought to you by Auto Owners Insurance. Protect what matters most with an Auto Owners Insurance independent agent. Find yours at AutoOwnersInsurance.com. Historic drive is brought to you by Cadillac. It ended with a touchdown catch from C.J. Fedorowicz. Four plays, 65 yards, only took a minute and four off the clock. Culminating with the first touchdown pass of the career for Jake Rudolph. It's nice to get that first TD pass when you're a young quarterback. And this whole game was started by the defensive touchdown for Iowa. Christian Kirksey with the hit, the scoop, and the score to put the points on the board for the first time for Iowa earlier in the first half. Well, let's check in again with Dana Hughes. Hey, guys, I want to give credit to Phil Parker and Greg Davis, the offensive and defensive coordinators for this Hawkeye program. Watching those last two series defensively, attention to detail. Any coach will tell you, and Chuck, you know this as well as I do, the first thing that you have to do, the primary thing you have to do is to get guys to buy into your philosophies and buy into your verbiage. You watch defense in that last drive with Hitchens coming in late, time to snap perfectly, great coverage on the back end. Offensively, owning in the trenches, taking some chances with the flea flicker, throwing the ball downfield. And then I thought I was watching basketball when I watched C.J. Fedorowicz make that catch. He boxed everybody out, made a good touchdown play. Great job offensively and defensively. Give the credit to the coordinators. Dana, instead of the pivot in the lane, it was the pivot just as he got across the goal line. Put his back to that defense and hauled it in to give Iowa that 17-10 lead. After the Northern Illinois touchdown, they have fumbled, punted, and punted again. The Iowa defense stepping it up here in the second quarter. Harris Jr. going nowhere against that Iowa defense. The Iowa linebackers, three seniors right there, all three in the top ten of the Big Ten. It tackles last year. Anthony Hitchens led the Big Ten in tackles. He's the man there until they gain it soon. That's going to be tough duty running right at the Iowa front seven. They're big, they're strong, and they are physical, as you see on this play, and they're gang tackling right now. Third down and seven now for Jordan Lynch. Hawkeyes rush only four. Lynch keeps it himself, and he's got enough for a first down. That's that same play that he burned them on last year, I think, for a 70-yard-plus touchdown run. It's just a little quarterback, little quarterback draw play. Running back, lead blocks. They just, they have the defense spread out in coverage, and there's they have an extra man to block, and it's an easy play for Northern Illinois. Gain of 11, tackle made for the second consecutive play for Iowa by Anthony Hitchens. Jordan Lynch converts there, and it's first down and 10 from the 39. Nice cat and mouse game between both coordinators right now. A little tighter set for Northern Illinois. 
Harris Jr. up the middle. Out to the 43-yard line. And that's a gain of four. That's going to be tough work, although they're, they're getting into a second. It's manageable second down, of course, getting that four yards. Your impression so far, Jordan Lynch, the passer. His numbers say eight for 13, but he's thrown a couple of balls that really should have been caught. On the move there, out to the man who had the touchdown earlier, that's Tommy Lee Lewis. You could, that's a gain of two. Go ahead, Chuck. Sorry, Paul. You could feel Jordan's experience out there. He just level-headed, has great poise. You know, you're, you're never out of the game with, with a, a guy like Jordan Lynch, and you can feel that with him. He's throwing the ball real well, too, Chuck, I think. Putting it right where he's supposed to on some difficult throws, good decisions. See if they go through the air or keep it on the ground here on third down and four. Moments ago, they picked up the third down with the quarterback draw. There's your quad look out here, Paul. Four receivers trying to single up to get the single over there. Didn't get it. Lynch was looking left the whole time. He put it behind his receiver, but that's an excellent catch. Angelo Sebastiano helps out his quarterback, and the Huskies pick up 18 on third and four. Went to a cover two in the back end. When you do that, you try to attack the middle of the field, which is exactly what Northern Illinois did. Now to hurry up. Look how quickly they're getting right back to the line of scrimmage. First down and 10 from the 38. 4-10 remaining until halftime. Tommy Lee Lewis breaking tackles and picking up another Husky first down. Down to the 21-yard line. This is what fastball offense does. It makes tackling sloppy. Okay, I believe it's uh, Kirk's here. Spins off, make the tackle there, but there's no secondary help there. Louderbiff Miller combined for the tackle for Iowa, but that's 17 yards for Northern Illinois. Iowa. Their first. And a timeout taken by the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Huskies are on the move and trailing by seven. 3.55 until halftime. Watch out! Oh my goodness! See you later! Oh no, he didn't! Down the sideline! Bringing the ruckus! Oh! Making him look silly! Uh-oh! Adios, muchachos! Oh, blood! He's at the 15, 10, 5! <laughs> oh, sorry, I got a little carried away there. The 429-horsepower Genesis R-Spec from Hyundai. Hot sauce! Tuesday night, our panel of Big Ten insiders debate the hottest issues in college football and discuss how the nation's biggest stories impact the conference. Big Ten football and beyond. Tuesday at 7 Eastern, only on BTN. Tomorrow, it's a top 10 men's soccer showdown on BTN. The defending national champion and top-ranked Hoosiers square off with ninth-ranked UCLA in Bloomington. Don't miss men's soccer tomorrow at 2 Eastern on BTN and BTN to go. This October, Big Ten Network's award-winning original series is back. It's the show with an unprecedented look inside a Big Ten season. The Journey, Big Ten Football 2013, presented by Best Buy, premieres October 9th only on Big Ten Network. Thank you, everybody. Whether you're a fan or someone like yourself, an All-American, anytime you can take a look inside and see what happens behind the scenes, it's good TV. It's great TV. Yeah, I think the more we can bring it to the fans, the better. First down and 10. The Huskies on the move here. Lynch, play action. Plenty of time to pass. Wants Tommy Lee Lewis. Touchdown, Huskies. You saw the poise in the pocket there, Paul, with that throw. That's a, that's a veteran throw right there. Bought a little time for his white, his receiver to run a wheel route down the sideline out, out of the backfield. You need a little time to do that. Back's coming out of the backfield for a wheel route. We call it down the sideline. He had to buy a little time. Great protection. Excellent throw. You hear so often how a quarterback's not supposed to stare down his receiver, but sometimes it works. I mean, he was looking that way the whole time. But two things, patience and accuracy made up for the fact that he was looking that way the whole time. And he's, he wasn't worried about the pressure, kept his eyes down the field, found a little soft spot in the cover two, and that's a vulnerable spot for that wheel route. Matthew Sims now has a field goal and also two extra points. And the Huskies have come back to tie this one at 17. Eight plays for Northern Illinois that time. They have two touchdowns today, Chuck. Both Jordan Lynch to Tommy Lee Lewis touchdowns. 40, and then just moments ago, 21 yards out. Here's again, just 
it's really protection here. Gave him plenty of time to throw the ball. Little wheel route. Pass the, pass the linebacker there, and it just that's the soft spot of the defense, and they exploited it. Jordan Lynch now is 12 out of 17, 140 yards, two touchdowns, and no interceptions. And I read about him all summer and thought he's just this great runner who can also throw it a little bit. You get to know him a little bit better. He's a pretty good thrower. Last year, he, he was not only number one in total offense in the MAC, but he also led that conference in passing efficiency. I wanted to watch his progression from the game they played last year, which was the first game up until now, and he has gotten better and better throwing the football. He wasn't quite there. In fact, Iowa played him very probably the best they played of any team and he was all six year. Out of Sixteen in that game. Right, yeah. and and he from that point that game on, he just got better and better. And you're seeing a veteran quarterback now that has all the throws. Obviously, he can run the ball. Back deep for Iowa, Jordan Cotton lets that one go through the end zone. Iowa will come out to the 25-yard line. Be sure to stay tuned at the half for the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime reports. Halftime report not too far away. Only 349 left until halftime here in Iowa City. Well, we have a ball game. Yes, we do. Huskies jumped out to that 10-point lead. Iowa got the momentum going or got it back. Christian Kirksey, the senior linebacker, the scoop and the score to put Iowa on the board. Hawkeyes went ahead 17 to 10 and a couple of touchdown passes from Jordan Lynch, both to Tommy Lee Lewis. And it's 9 at 17. David Plenty. Bullock to tailback. Plenty of time. You can run the ball here. Got plenty of time on the clock. Here's Bullock. Picking his way around that right side. Gets what he can and picks up six yards. Love the one-two punch of Bullock and Weissman right now for Iowa. That's going to really bode well for them for the remainder of the year. But like their combination, that's probably because of the heat as well. That'll help them in this football game. Nice run to the outside there. The weakness of the defense. They're hitting that weak side of the offensive line where there's less defenders. Weissman and Bullock combining right now. Chuck for 20 carries. Jake Rudock has 18 pass attempts. Here's Bullock once again, and that's an Iowa first down. Wasn't touched until he was in that Northern Illinois secondary. A great sign that the offensive line doing a nice job. He picks up 10. Same weak side run. And right now, Northern Illinois is not adjusted to it. They have plenty of hats, what we call hats on, on uh, defenders in the coaching world, and they, that's weak side runs right now for Iowa. Two, all two back. Iowa flexing its uh, its depth there, its muscles at the depth. Running back Jordan Kanziri in, and that's good timing out to Kevonte Martin Manley. It wasn't pretty, Chuck, but that doesn't matter. It's a first down. It's a first down, and what they what they did to set that up. Oh, have a penalty here. A penalty marker in the backfield. We'll take a listen. Hawkeyes are applauding what they're hearing from the officials. During the play, personal foul, face mask, defense number 89. 15 yard penalty. It's happening right now. A good set for them. Number 89. Run, run. run. Then they condense the defense and they get one on one coverage on the outside. And they're taking, they took advantage of it with that throw. Here it is. They're all, all the defense is tight inside. They're one on one on the outside. Great protection. Good pick up there. Nice. Not, not a great not a great spiral there, but it doesn't matter. Anytime you get a soft corner like that, Chuck, and there's no flat player out there in front, I mean, that's uh, nothing is easy, but, right. but that's pitch and catch. They're favoring outside throws with Jake Muda, and that's very smart with the young quarterback. 15-yard penalty makes it first down and 10 at the 28-yard line. Kanziri with the football. He gets just across the 25-yard line. Kanziri lost all of last season after tearing his ACL in spring football in 2012. One of the faster young men on this Iowa team. He and Damon Powell are probably the two fastest, and they're finding ways to get both those young men on the field. Earned the trust of Kirk Ferentz by showing how tough he was in a surprise start in the inside goal a couple of seasons ago against one of your old teams there, Oklahoma. He picks up two yards off the left side there. Here's your red zone efficiency. Let's see if they can capitalize down here in the red zone. Great field position. They already have three points. And when you tell a quarterback, hey, it's third and medium right now, you already have the three. Don't take the sack. Don't make a mistake with the football. We can at least get three or at least try for three. 
Last time Iowa inside the red zone, they turned that opportunity into a touchdown as Jake Rudolph found C.J. Fedorowicz right at the goal line. Hawks facing third and four. So far, they're four out of eight, converting third down into first downs. Hopefully use a timeout here, and, which is okay. You're right before the half. So 143 left, so on third down and four. And there's Bobby Kennedy, the new wide receiver coach for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And, uh, interesting connection with Greg Davis. Spent seven seasons coaching with him on the offensive side of the football at Texas. And that, that, that's, it's just nice to have someone who knows your style inside the room. It, it, it really is. Having been, been a former offensive coordinator, I wanted somebody that I could that I could game plan with. You can't. It's hard to game plan with everybody in the room. You, you, you need a guy that you game plan with, just you and him. And Bobby Kennedy is that for Greg Davis. You know, Greg feels comfort, comfortable with him. They worked together before at Texas. I thought Greg last year really didn't have anybody in his room to, to you know, that he knew that he, that knew Greg's work. Nothing against the coaching staff. They're all good coaches, but it's always nice to have that guy you're familiar with, where you can game plan with, and you, they, you know each other. And Greg has that Bobby Kennedy. I thought that was a good hire for Kirk Ferris this year. Hey, Greg Davis was the offensive coordinator at Texas, I believe, when you were the offensive coordinator at Oklahoma. You guys had, you weren't going against each other because he right. wasn't against your defense, but uh, you both had big roles in those huge mashups between Texas and OU. Big battles in the, in the coaching world. It's a small world. You're, you're running each other over and over and over again. We won't point out who won most of those games. <laughs> Just wanted to say there's some familiarity. You guys have been in the same place at different right. times. Third down and four. Empty backfield for Jake Rudolph. Low clock winding down at one. They get it off. Sprints out to his right. And throws a strike. Nice play. Jake Rudolph, Cavante, Martin Manley, his most experienced receiver. Calls it in for 10. First down, Iowa. Good, good game plan and good scouting here. They went to man coverage or one-on-one. -on -one. They roll the pocket, meaning, hey, if the receiver's not open, run the football, Jake. That time the receiver's open, made a nice play. Rudolph doing a good job of distributing that football. Executing the plays that are called. It's first down Iowa on the 12-yard line. This is a tough spot on the first and 10 on the 12. These are tough spots to call the game. Bullock off the right side, showing patience. Puts the head down and run out of bounds. Why do you say this is a, a tough spot on first and 10 from the 12? Yeah, because you know you're so the first down mark is so close to the goal line it's hard to it's hard to really call plays to get to that first down so you treat it like hey you're almost first and goal there because it's hard to get that first down right inside you know you might as well try to go for the touchdown in this case where you're at on the field 134 left Weisman now in its tailback with the score all tied at 17. Play clock winding down. Get it off inside. He got the ball out of his hands quickly to Mark Manley. Good form tackle. That's keeping your head up. Proper form tackle right there. Johnny Boston there right away with the contact and also the tackle to keep that to a gain of four. Third and fourth to six here, Chuck. You know that a field goal is going to put you up 20 to 17. Your quarterback's been making nice decisions. Do you, do you run it or throw it here? I would say you take a shot with the passing game, especially if you're one-on-one -on -one outside, just throw the fade route up, see if they can do that. Right to the passing game, as you said. Can he keep it himself and get in? Yes, he can. Touchdown, Rudolph. Or do that. <laughs> <laughs> or just go around the left side. <laughs> That's a great heads-up play by Jake Rudolph there, Paul. Good job of, of shuffling back and sure. keeping his eyes downfield and realizing at the right time, my best chance is to run it. They tried to run a crossing pattern, a couple of a, a crossing pick play. He did a nice job of extending that ball right at the pylon. That's a safe, safe run right there when you extend the ball. Take a closer look and see if he did get in, and that's going to be close. We'll be close. They do review every single scoring play, so they're taking a close look at that up here in the press box. We'll time out. And we stop play the now so they can play. take an even closer look. further review. The ruling on the field Jake is a touchdown. Jake's really playing smart football. Both quarterbacks are very, very impressed with both of them today, the way they're taking care of the football and making good decisions. Now let's keep in mind here, Chuck, that that was third and four, so obviously Iowa wants the touchdown. 
But there's a good chance if it doesn't count for a score, they're going to have first and goal. It all, it's all dependent on that knee. The ball's across the line. Is it, yeah, did the knee go across the line and hit before he did that? Watch that knee there. Oh, that's close. So it's either going to be touchdown Iowa or first at goal Iowa with 53 seconds left. Here's a pretty good angle. It looked like the knee, the ball went across the goal line, broke the plane. That foot might have slipped out of bounds right, right there. there. And the knee's out of bounds. So a couple of questions. Uh, and the ball's across the plane, so. Looked like the ball was across with the right knee. Right. Was the left foot out of bounds, though? That's why uh, we don't get paid to do that, make that call to the ball. <laughs> and think about how much better he feels right now than, than we, we, we did the open for this broadcast. He'd never taken a snap. And now he's not even thinking about the fact that he hadn't played. He probably feels like a, I mean, a young veteran, but... The memory of having zero experience probably feels like a long time ago for him. I think he feels good right now. Got a touchdown pass already. Might have a touchdown run. Ooh, that is close. Yeah, that right knee from this angle, you couldn't tell if it was on that white, the white stripe or not. Yeah, play stands. Touchdown, Iowa. Unless it's conclusive, it's going to stand. Unless you could turn it on a, and be sure about it, the play will stand. The second quarter has been a, a steady turn of events for Kirk Ferentz and Jake Rudolph. They trailed 10 to nothing early in this game. And since then, they have gone on a 23, go ahead and make a 24 to 7 run to take a seven point lead with 53 seconds left until halftime. And they use clock, which is most important. There's less than a minute now for Jordan Lynch and his troops. So that was good clock ball or clock management by congratulations to go around there for Kirk Ferentz on the Iowa sideline a reminder that tonight in prime time Taylor Martinez and his Nebraska Cornhuskers kick off the season against Wyoming that's tonight 8 o'clock Eastern presented by Buick on BTN and BTN to go Taylor Martinez a quarterback kind of like Jordan Lynch just a little more experienced he can beat you on the ground beat you in the air and there's the guy we're focused on today, Jordan Lynch. We expected a lot of athleticism, a lot of production, a lot of maturity, and I think we've seen it through almost two quarters. We have, and, and very impressed with Jordan Lynch as a player. Again, he's just made great strides since last year, ended the year on a great note. Part of two MAC championship football teams in Northern Illinois. They have a nice tradition going there. Uh, it may turn into a quarterback U there. You know, they, they've had some good quarterbacks there. And, and I'm sure that'll continue in Northern Illinois. Their system is a quarterback-friendly system, and they have a lot of movement in their system, but they're running the same plays. So they, they give a lot of variation to the defense, but at the same time, they run the same plays over and over again. Very quarterback-friendly offense. Quarterback-friendly because of the consistency with the play calling? Yes. Yes, and all the different formations to confuse the defense. Paris Logan takes a knee, and Jordan Lynch will get a chance here. 53 seconds left from his own 25-yard line. Let's check in again with Dana Hughes. Hey, guys, I'm down here on the Husky sideline. Got a chance to watch the defense go off the field. A little bit dejected over these last couple of drives, specifically in the second quarter. But more importantly, what I'm seeing is a little bit of wear and tear on them. These big bodies by the Iowa Hawkeyes are leaning on them with these established drives. It's going to be interesting to see what happens and how this team reacts when they come back from that break at halftime. And remember, Dana, that uh, we pointed out earlier in the broadcast, in that front seven from Northern Illinois that was so good last year, they lost five of those players. Yep. So they're just getting to know some of those defensive linemen and linebackers. Jordan Lynch, just across the 30-yard line, he picks up five yards. Hey, they're going, it's, it's right before the half, they could have played it safe. But, but not Northern Illinois. They're going to run Jordan Lynch right up the gut. Huskies have no timeouts remaining, so they're going to have to be really efficient here with the way they work the clock with the spikes and getting out of bounds if they're going to put something together. What they're saying right here is, hey, let's eat up the clock. We're, we're probably going into halftime, but if we get a big run... Like right there. Then we'll keep going. Let's we'll see if they keep going. Harris Jr. out to the 44. Now it's decision time with 20 seconds left. Do you take a couple shots and get in field goal range? I believe at this point, yes. That's why they're spiking the ball, so they want some time. 
You have about three plays here, okay, with 17 seconds. You which, have about three. Which ones do you like? Well, you have to get it. You have to get a shot at some point. You're talking about a shot to get into field goal range. Get into field goal touchdown. range, right? I, I'm think you're thinking field goal range here. On the 44-yard line now, got to get up around the 35 for a realistic shot. Lynch, plenty of time. Nowhere to go with it. Flushed out to his right side. There's where he's dangerous. And gets out to the 48-yard line. Clock ticking now inside of five seconds. And again, because of no timeouts remaining for the Huskies, that's going to do it for the first half. The first half it started out with a 10 to nothing Northern Illinois lead, but the Hawkeyes come back. They score on defense. Christian Kirksey, a big hit, a scoop, and a score, and solid play from the first start of Jake Rudolph. A hot day here in Iowa City. Look at our Dana Hughes. There's the head coach at Iowa, Kirk Ferris. Iowa, after a sluggish start, heads to the halftime locker room, leading 24 to 17. Caught up in the excitement. Buffalo Wild Wings. More wings, more sports. Hey, who's this? Tonight, Memorial Stadium will be electric when Taylor Martinez leads the Cornhuskers' big play offense into a primetime shootout with Wyoming. Tonight at 8 Eastern, presented by Buick on BTN and BTN to go. Toward the sounds of chaos. Forged in the crucible of training, they are the first to move toward the sounds of tyranny, injustice, and despair. They are the few, the proud, the marine. When the game is over, stick around for the State Farm Post Game Show. In-depth highlights from the entire conference and complete analysis from our Big Ten experts. The State Farm Post Game Show, immediately after the game, only on BTN. Tomorrow, it's a top ten men's soccer showdown on BTN. The defending national champion and top-ranked Hoosiers square off with ninth-ranked UCLA in Bloomington. Don't miss men's soccer tomorrow at 2 Eastern on BTN and BTN to go. Presenting the Buffalo Wild Wings Big Ten Football Championship Sweepstakes. You could be on your way to Indianapolis for the 2013 Big Ten Football Championship game or win one of a number of other great prizes. Register today at btn.com slash BWW Sweepstakes. Impressive first half for the Hawkeyes. Jake Rudock looking good. Nice presence of mind here to pull it down, dive for the pylon. The Hawkeyes on top of NIU, 24 to 17 at the break. As we welcome you in the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report, Dave Revson, Jerry DiNardo, Howard Griffith didn't start well for Iowa, down 10 nothing, but very impressive, and they have gotten the offense going. They really have, and Rudock has done a tremendous job of doing that. The clip we just showed, I thought it was outstanding because he was in the pocket, nowhere to go, then he worked his way outside, and instead of forcing the ball down the field, he decided to use his legs to score that touchdown, and this is a young quarterback making decisions like that, so that's good. And they go down 10 nothing, and the Iowa defense has shut down Northern Illinois offense. How about holding Jordan Lynch to 42 yards and a defensive score so after it was 10 nothing both sides got it going and have control of the game i'll tell you what this is an iowa offense last year that averaged 310 yards for the game per game they have 302 so far in the first half so looking vastly improved and on top of a good niu team that played in the orange bowl last season 
Elsewhere in the Big Ten right now, Michigan in action against Central Michigan and the Wolverines having their way. CMU punting, or at least attempting to. Devontae Thomas with the block. Joe Reynolds scoops and scores. Wolverines on top, 7-0. Devin Gardner's thrown a couple interceptions. Hasn't been flawless by any stretch, but nice ball there to Jeremy Gallon, and the Wolverines are up big at the half, 35 to 6. The offense for Penn State has struggled. Christian Hackenberg got the start. He split time with Tyler Ferguson, neither particularly effective. This is Zach Zwinak here, who has 52 rushing yards. That set up a field goal. It's been a battle of field goals, 6-3. Nittany Lions over the Q's at the half that game is at the Meadowlands. We have four games already in the books. Highlights coming up next. It's the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. This is the Quicken Loans team. A team dedicated to providing clients with an amazing home loan experience. For three years in a row, J.D. Power & Associates has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction. Because at Quicken Loans, client service isn't everything. It's the only thing. Quicken Loans, engineered to amaze. This is more than just your yield. More than a job well done. It's what you were meant to do. And a passion we share for the life of your land, for the life that you love. It's more than just another day. It's your moment. And with Mycogen Seeds, this is just the beginning. Imagine if you took the world's most advanced video game and used the technology to help improve safety on America's roadways. The National Advanced Driving Simulator, or NADS for short, at the University of Iowa is doing just that through a virtual experience unlike any other. We offer a place where any sponsor can come in and test vehicle technology, vehicle interfaces, and put people in near crash situations, but without actual harm to the people themselves. The facility is a collection of simulators, the most massive and impressive of which can reach speeds up to seven tenths of a G. We get the opportunity to study things which couldn't be studied in the real world. We're providing scientists with information that would be impossible to get otherwise. So there's no question that that would help other people and that would impact the future for everyone. Dave Cherry and Howard with you. The Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. Already four games in the books in the Big Ten on this first Saturday of the college football season. Let's run you through what we've seen so far, starting with the number two ranked team in the nation, Ohio State. Started off great for the Buckeyes. This is the first pass of the game from Braxton Miller. Devin Smith hauls it in. 47-yard touchdown. They scored three TDs in their first three series. We're leading it 23 to nothing. Miller threw for 178, ran for 77, had some problems with Cram though gave way to Kenny Guyton who hits Chris Fields Ohio State wins it but Buffalo gave him a game for a while 40 to 20 is the final Buckeyes 13 straight wins longest winning streak in the nation Gary Anderson making his debut as the head coach of Wisconsin they hosted UMass and they got very little resistance from the Minutemen Melvin Gordon went 70 yards on this run 13 carries 144 yards for him James White Put up similar numbers, 11 carries, 143 yards. Wisconsin ran for 392 yards on the game, and they roll 45 to nothing. Badgers is the final. 
speaking of debuts, Daryl Hazel, his first game as the head coach of Purdue, and it did not go nearly as well as Anderson's debut did. This is Rob Henry. This is the offensive highlight of the game for the Boilers as Cincinnati had its way with Purdue. Henry here intercepted by Adrian Witte on a poorly thrown ball. He brings it back for the pick six, and the Bearcats pummel the Boilers. 42-7 is the final. Illinois hosting Southern Illinois. Viangelo Bentley bringing the kickback 100 yards for a touchdown. This game was one that Illinois led by 15 points late in the game, but Southern scored a touchdown after a turnover. And then the game ran out with them going for it from Illinois' three and throwing incomplete on fourth down. So the Illini did escape 42-34. What do you take from Illinois' win? Big win, and you mentioned it, Reverend. They had a lead they couldn't protect. Remember the sports psychology of a losing team trying to become a winning team. The one thing they're not used to doing, Howard, is protecting a lead, and they played like they weren't used to protecting a lead. Wisconsin, I thought, really stepped up. And, and what I want to talk about in their running game is the fact that Melvin Gordon You can go full speed at somebody and really not get in trouble. Right up the middle, goodbye. Your heart's pumping. 80,000 fans cheering for you. If you don't get jacked up to play in front of those fans, you got a problem. Next Saturday, Penn State clashes with Eastern Michigan. Wisconsin looks to run wild on Tennessee Tech or other great action. Next Saturday at noon Eastern, presented by the United States Marine Corps on BTN and BTN to go. We are set to start the third quarter here in Iowa City with Iowa leading Northern Illinois 24 to 17. The new wall of honor here just below the press box. Number 16 is Chuck Long. He's my partner tonight. And I remember many times sitting over there in section R watching Chuck here. He's doing it on the road right now. But from 1982 to 1985, there wasn't a better quarterback in college football. Runner up to the Heisman to Bo Jackson in 1985. And Chuck, those were magic years as Iowa went from struggling for so long signature moment there the touchdown against Michigan State and th there's my career getting sacked <laughs> well, we've got you throwing touchdowns and I think I was sacked nine times that game I should have gotten rid of the ball more and there's Dana Hughes I think Dana finished as the all-time leading receiver he's since been passed but Dana had a fantastic career best receiver I played with here at Iowa as tough as he was athletic and he's on the sideline with us today Dana come on in buddy what's going on guys I hear, although I should have been paying you, Paul. You should have been my agent. I might still be playing. <laughs> should have thrown the ball to you more often. <laughs> yeah. And those are some great memories. It was a treat to watch Chuck. Some of those highlights from Chuck Long up on the scoreboard. And uh, we, got, uh, we got Brad Banks down here as well. Two guys that were in that Heisman race. A lot of great football, great football history around this Hawkeye program. It's been a blessing. Hey, Chuck, what I remember best, we had a lot of good moments down here but 1985 one against two Iowa against Michigan and just the night before national TV the lights came in the center of the college football universe was Iowa City for the first time and the play in the field was great but just that week of realizing what was coming on Saturday was terrific the whole week was great and 
you know, the roar of that crowd when we won over the last second field goal by Rob Hotland. I'll never forget the roar of the crowd. Uh, it'll stay with all of us for the rest of our lives. Went home and studied that night, I'm sure. <laughs> hey, I wanted to get the whole field of campus ball, so we went downtown Iowa City, and it was buzzing down there. Uh, I was in ninth grade, so I... I went home to study, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure that was a good evening. Second half underway. Angela Sebastiano had a nice catch with Jordan Lynch in the first half and brings that one out to the 20-yard line. Jordan Lynch comes back out. He was 12 out of 18 in that first half for 140 yards, two touchdowns, and no picks. He also ran the ball 10 times for 42 yards. I don't think there needs to be any or many halftime adjustments for either team. They both were moving the ball, at least on offense. No adjustments. Half to, uh, defensively, probably maybe see a little bit more blitz from both teams. Let's see what happens. Keith Harris Jr., the tailback. I mentioned Lynch has carried the ball ten times. The tailbacks have only carried it five. Go ahead and make it six. Louder milk with the tackle at the 27, but that's a gain of seven. Let's go back again to Danon Hughes. Well, guys, I got a chance to talk to both head coaches going into halftime and coming out. Rod, Car Rod Car Carey uh, spoke about not, not having a surge of energy, I, I mean, a, a sense of urgency. I, I talked to him, and he was really just upbeat about his team. He thought, hey, we just need to do a few things different, just tighten up the screws just a little bit, and we're in this ball game, which was a little bit of a, a, a question in my mind because I thought there would be a little bit of a concern in his voice, but I think his attitude matriculates all over across his roster. With Coach Ferentz, he just talked about doing great things. They, they did an incredible job in the first half, specifically Jake Rudock. He was very impressed with his composure and what he did, especially in that last drive. So both coaches relatively confident going into the second half. Well, Dana, Tommy Lee Lewis has been as valuable a Husky as we've seen today, minus Jordan Lynch, as you saw, two touchdown catches. And he went down there. Right there you can see him in the center of your screen. And the Huskies very hopeful he can come back. He get rolled up on there. Yeah, it just looked like an ankle. And Lynch keeps it himself. And that's a Northern Illinois first down. Two running plays equals a first down, and that's a gain of six. Little counter play there, a little quarterback counter. Try a misdirection, get an extra hat on the weak side of the defense, which they were able to do for a nice first down. What a difference a year makes for Jordan Lynch and the, the offensive line last year against Iowa. Jordan had never started a game, and the entire offensive line hadn't started. Now they are all back, and Jordan Lynch, one of the most explosive quarterbacks in the country. That's Harris off the right side, and that's the Iowa defense. Trinka Passat is there, Hitchens is there. Drew Ott also into the tackle, and that's a gain of two. Trying to smash it up in there against a heavy, strong defense. That's tough to do against Iowa. But be ready. They may set a play action off of that. Play fake, and gets it outside quickly. We've seen that quite a bit, and Kirksey. There with the tackle, and that is only a gain of two. The completion to Brindley. Quick wide to see the screen. Looked like Jordan turned the wrong way, the back went the wrong way. Right. Quick wide receiver screen, great pursuit by the Iowa defense. That's a strategy by offensive units to try to get the defense tired, get him running laterally for late in the game when top tackle gets sloppy. Third down and six, Northern Iowa, Northern Illinois, three out of seven. Converting in this situation, Kirksey chasing Lynch. Lowry with the coverage, Lynch threw a strike, but it falls incomplete. It's fourth down. A little scissors route by the outside two receivers. A Northern Illinois just trying to get the defenders off of them and then coming back hard to the first down marker. Christian Kirksey showing his versatility and athleticism on that series there, Chuck. He out wide, made a tackle on a wide receiver and then forced Lynch to throw that one a bit early. Love the way they have him all over the field. And he's playing all over the field. Kevontae Martin Manley. The veteran wide receiver for the Hawkeyes back deep to receive. Manley lets that one hit at the 27-yard line. He goes out of bounds. And Jake Rudolph will come out and take his first snaps of the third quarter. Just underway in the second half. The Hawkeyes lead 24 to 17.
once you experience the Buick Verano Turbo with more horsepower than an Audi A4, everything else seems a little slow. You remember their days competing in the conference. Now, the BTN Original Series Forever Big reconnects with these former athletes for a view of life after the Big Ten. Forever Big, featuring Tony Mandrich and Brad Sellers. Premieres Friday on BTN. Jack Lang's Beef Jerky presents Messin' with Sasquatch. Link's Jerky. Feed your wild side. Weeknights. Join the conversation on BTN Live. It's the most comprehensive nightly college football discussion from the guys who love to talk about the game. BTN Live. Weeknights at 6 Eastern on BTN. We're replaying the best games of the weekend in a fraction of the time. All the drama, snap to snap, delivered to you in only one hour. Big Ten Football in 60, presented by Quicken Loans, Monday at 5 Eastern on BTN. Next month, dads are moving in. And it won't be pretty. This Jew? No, well, that's not me. I don't know. It looks like you in the face part. Dads premieres next month on Fox. Special Spectators is a nonprofit dedicated to creating magical experiences for seriously ill children and their families. Special Spectators doesn't just take kids to games, but makes them part of the games by providing special access to people and areas of the stadium not accessible to ordinary fans. To find out how to get involved, go to specialspectators.org. 13.04 left in the third quarter. The Iowa Hawkeyes on top, 24-17. Brad Banks was an All-American quarterback here in 2002. Went into the Iowa Hall of Fame last night, and he's on the sideline right now with Damon Hughes. Brad, before we get into your all your accolades and you're here as uh, getting into the Iowa Hall of Fame, I got one quick question. I got to get something off my chest. You're a quarterback. You wore the red jerseys in practice. You got two quarterbacks up in the booth enjoying the air conditioning, but you're here on the field with me, 145 on the turf. Can you talk to those guys and tell them about how tough you are hey that's what it's all about Chuck <laughs> I'm holding it down for you though buddy I'm down here in the heat I got you <laughs> <laughs> but Brad seriously I mean you had a great career here what do you think about the Hawkeyes so far we look good we look good you know it's a little things out there that we uh, can't get right but it's first game you know they came out pretty strong and now we're in the third and we're moving how about Jake Rudock and his first ever game as a Hawkeye never mind I mean obviously his first college game as a quarterback Jake is doing a phenomenal job you know he comes from a winning program St. Thomas Aquinas down in Fort Lauderdale Florida he's a Florida boy so I'm happy to see him out here and uh, he's doing a great job thanks a lot Brad thanks for your time see this is a tough quarterback guys <laughs> <laughs> I'd be on the field. It would be a bad place to call a game. And I'm going to remind Dana that a moment ago I said he was as tough as he was athletic, and he's down there complaining about the heat. Well, I don't have that much pride. I'm glad he's down there and I'm up here. <laughs> it is comfy. <laughs> All right, Dana and Brad, thank you guys. And uh, as you were talking, a couple of former Iowa greats, the Iowa offense giving way to the punt team. One of, the, one of the adjustments the Northern Illinois defense has done so far, Paul's man coverage in the back end. Sebastiano, fair catch at the 23-yard line. That's where Jordan Lynch will get started as the Husky offense will go with series number two in the second half. The Hawkeyes lead by seven. This is the Quicken Loans team, a team dedicated to providing clients with an amazing home loan experience. For three years in a row, J.D. Power & Associates has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction. Because at Quicken Loans, client service isn't everything. It's the only thing. Quicken Loans, engineered to amaze.
Strong Storm. Z left flank. 18 slant. 499 Oscar. Let's face it, football is complicated. This stuff isn't easy. He runs a 16 yard in cut. A high corner route. You're going to pull your guard around. They're going to start inside and read the secondary. Block back with the center. If that's muddy, we're going to outflank and hit this one. In, under, check down. From the pregame show to the final drive. BTN definitely has you covered. It's Pep Boys Labor Day Savings Event. Whether you buy one tire for as low as $39.98, buy two, get a free oil change, or buy three and get the fourth tire free, Pep Boys has the lowest prices guaranteed. Life is full of point Bs. Trust the boys to get you there. The Big Ten Football Game of the Week, tomorrow at 8 Eastern on BTN. Get a closer view of football pregame festivities with Field Pass presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Experience the sights and sounds that make college football special before every BTN game. Field Pass presented by Buffalo Wild Wings exclusively on BTN to go. America's new sports network is here. Fox Sports 1 with live sports like Major League Baseball. College football, UFC, college basketball, NASCAR, and more. Original shows like Crowd Goes Wild, Fox Football Daily, and Fox Sports Live. The news and highlight show fans have been waiting for. Dick, dick. We're replaying the best games of the weekend in a fraction of the time. All the drama, snap to snap, delivered to you in only one hour. Big Ten Football in 60, presented by Quicken Loans, Monday at 5 Eastern on BTN. That's Phil Parker right there, the defensive coordinator for the Iowa Hawkeyes. He's in his second season as the defensive coordinator. His 15th, though, in Iowa. His first 13, he coached defensive backs. Last year, he gave up that title, moved from the field upstairs to the box to just coordinate the defense. Now he's back down in the field. He's back in the room coaching DBs. He also has coaching veteran Jim Reed to help him as kind of a sounding board. So year two as a coordinator for Phil, I think is going to feel a whole lot different than year one. He's happy to be back coaching secondary. Happy with his defense right there, bottling up Jordan Lynch, big Carl Davis, number 71, for a gain of one. And he's the guy we talked about in the meetings yesterday. 6'5", 315. Phil Parker said he went to see him in high school. He was dunking the basketball. He's over 300 pounds. He said, I kind of like this guy. This is a guy that can really make their defense this year, Paul. If he, he just needs to become more consistent, but he certainly has the size and talent to be a dominating player in the Big Ten. Jordan Lynch, play action, roll out to the right. That's Angela Sebastiano, the Iowa defense led by B.J. Lowry, keeping him from getting a first down. Gain of eight, and it's going to be third down and one. Jordan Lynch has two touchdown passes today, both to Tommy Lee Lewis. We saw Tommy Lee leave the game with leg injury in the last series. Go to the ground game to pick up the first down, and there's Cameron Stingley. NIU coaches spoke so well of him during the week, and there's really his first big play. On third down and one, he gets six. He's a big, strong back with great leg drive here. It just is a diamond formation, so they're packing the set on offense. A lot of bodies in there, and they just run an inside zone play, and he, and he cut it backside to the soft, spot of the soft spot of the defense. Northern Illinois now first down and ten. And Lynch keeps it himself, and the Iowa defense is there. James Morris finishes him off, and that's a loss of two. Looked like a busted play for Northern Illinois. I don't think they really wanted to run that place. Somebody went the wrong way here. Yeah, they have a lead blocker here. They just had too many hats. Good defensive call by uh, defensive coordinator Phil Parker of Iowa, loading that box up, bringing an extra defender on the line of scrimmage at the point of attack. Hitchens was there first. Mike Hardy also in, and James Morris with the tackle for that loss of one. Harris Jr. back in at tailback. Lynch has two wide receivers to his left and two to the right, and he's got plenty of time. Didn't have anyone open, throwing into coverage. Nice. Kirksey out there once again, the linebacker again, covering a wide receiver. That's not something you see very often. No, Phil Parker, defensive coordinator, felt like he, they could put Kirksey out on a slot receiver instead of bringing another de defensive back in. They feel so good about him in those situations. And that, not, you're right, Paul, not many people do that. But they feel very confident in Kirksey's ability to cover a slot receiver. Christian Kirksey celebrating his birthday here today. He had a touchdown on the scoop and score on the fumble earlier. All over the field here since then. This is third down and 11. 
Lynch looking left the whole time, and that's an accurate throw to Sebastiano. Jordan Lomax there with the coverage, but that's a gain of nine. This is a, just a, the receiver's got to get deeper. He's got to get to the sticks to give themselves a chance at the first down. It's a nice executed play, but you tell your receiver, hey, you got to be aware. Of course, now they're going for it on fourth down. Fourth down and two here, Chuck. Inside their own territory from the 46. Lynch makes the toss, keeps it himself. The Iowa defense right there. Looks like Lynch got about half a yard past the stick. Anthony Hitchens was there with the tackle. Kirksey also in on the play. Going back to that previous play, Paul, actually that was a good play call because they wanted to get some of the third down back, third down distance back for this fort, manageable fourth down. So they were thinking ahead on offense for Northern Illinois. That was actually a good play calling sequence by them. So on this drive, they're on the 48 now, first and 10. The Huskies on third down. Just before that play, pick up the first down on the ground, then go back to the ground on fourth and two. That's where they take shots after a big fourth down. And Lynch showed no hesitation to turn that one up. Nice job of the tackle by James Morris to wrap him up, push him back. Lynch still, though, picks up five. They were trying a shot play here, a downfield passing play, and they couldn't get open. Jordan, as smart as he is, and as veteran as he is, just tucks and runs and gets, gets to a second medium. Lynch now has 15 carries for 55 yards. Also 15 completions. 15 out of 23 for a buck 63. 16th carry of the game. The Iowa defense is there. Anthony Hitchens once again. Christian Kirksey once again. But that's a gain of one. Those senior linebackers standing out here for the Iowa D. Let's check in with Danny Hughes. Guys, you talk about this defense and Phil Parker, what he's done an outstanding job with so far in this game is rotation, especially on the front four. This defensive line is not tired. They're really doing a nice job in a controlled rush to keep Jordan Lynch in the pocket, not giving him those gaping holes that he can tuck the ball and run through. Nice job two gapping, but also still getting controlled pressure in his face. Nine tackles for Kirksey. This is third down and four. Penalty marker thrown as off his back foot. Lynch fired the fade pass. Iowa was bringing the blitz there, Paul. They're bringing, bringing the heat. They would add one extra defender on the quarterback with nobody to block. False start. Offense number four. All 11 players. Nobody to block him. Of course, Jordan knew that. Got rid of the fade ball. We have a penalty here. Five-yard penalty. Well, you spent time as an offensive coordinator. Third down and four. Feels a whole lot different than third down and nine. Yes. Just the options of what you can do change a whole lot with just those five yards. Well, when you're third and nine like this, it takes takes a running play away primarily. You don't have the, the run option. It's primarily a throwing down and distance. Empty backfield, two wide receivers to Lynch's left and three to his right. Again with time, and that's an excellent catch by Deron Brown. The pass was behind him. He hauled it in. Picked up a Husky first down. Gained a 15. Great job by the Northern Illinois offensive line of sliding to get pressure. They're bringing blitz off the edge. Iowa was. When you do that, you're going to leave some holes in the secondary. Jordan, you can't do that to Jordan. Give him time. Out of his hands quickly and with some space to run. Sebastiano, nice job on the tackle there. The form tackle by B.J. Lowry, the senior corner, and that's only a gain of three. Just your quick bubble play. It's another, it's like a form of a run, just throwing the ball out there. It's like your old power sweep, except you're not giving it to the running back. You're giving it to the wide receiver. Pardon me, that receiver, Chuck, is Jacob Brindley. This drive, 11 plays, 53 yards. And that's Stingley up the middle. Hawkeye defense remaining pretty strong in the middle. Louis Trinka Passat with the tackle. That's a gain of four. You're in four down territory here for Northern Illinois. Let's see if they have two plays called instead of if they have short going for a field goal on fourth down. See if they have two plays called to try to get the first down. Third down and two. Lynch couldn't come up with it. Hitchens in there to knock him back, but the whistle had blown. Timeout, Iowa. Hawkeyes called that timeout. Hmm. They just couldn't get lined up, or they had too many men on the field, Paul, and they had to, it forced them to call a timeout. Time out. Time out. They're trying Iowa. to run personnel They're on first. and off the field. And I'll tell you what, being the defensive coordinator in today's college football is the hardest job, I think. I want to hear a little bit more about that uh, throughout the rest of the game here. 7.05 left in the third quarter. Third down and two Huskies on the other side of this break. 
closer view of football pregame festivities with Field Pass presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Experience the sights and sounds that make college football special before every BTN game. Field Pass presented by Buffalo Wild Wings exclusively on BTN to go. Next month, dads are moving in. And it won't be pretty. This jewel? No, well, that's not me. I don't know. It looks like you in the face part. Dads premieres next month on Fox. Next weekend, we have another slate of great regional action. At noon, you'll see Penn State, Wisconsin, these Iowa Hawkeyes. Purdue, they'll all take the field. Then at 6 o'clock, Northwestern, Nebraska, and Indiana all battle under the lights. Next weekend on BTN and also BTN to go. Big down here for the Northern Illinois offense and also for the Iowa defense. Nice shot right there, Chuck. Before we get into football, you can see that the entire field is shaded now. And as Danon said, it was 163 on the field to start the game. It was 143 at halftime. And now the entire field there in the shade, good for everybody. This is third down and two. Lynch looking deep to Brown. Jordan Lomax gets his hand in there late, incomplete. That was a great play by Lomax. Well, he, he was beat. He stumbled, he was beat. And what they teach the defensive back, and when you stumble, that's a good move. He stumbles, bury your head and run to the defender and break the ball up. Great job, great technique by Jordan by Jordan uh, Lomax there. And so Coach DB is here in Iowa for a couple of seasons before moving back to the offensive side of the ball. Fourth down and two for the second time on this drive. The Huskies going for it. No surprise, Lynch keeps it himself. Kirksey is there. Good defense. Them. And it looks like they kept Northern Illinois short. The Iowa defense holds. That's a good stand there. Obviously, from before they they were going to go two plays there in that third third situ, third down situation. They knew they were going to go for it on fourth down. They tried a little counter play, a little misdirection. Iowa was not cool. But it's one thing to point out the experience of the Iowa linebackers. It's another to show them making plays when it matters. James Morris, the senior, is in there. Christian Kirksey is also there. Iowa's defense, that front seven, playing strong. That's a tough play call into the heart of that, the meat of that defense. Weissman the tailback now for Rudock on first down and 10 from the 23. Devontae Martin Manley has one on one outside. He turns it up. A little stiff arm to finish that route. This is actually a designed run play. Gain of 10. And if they feel like the, the corner's soft enough, they'll just throw it out to the wide receiver. They don't need the wide receiver to block in this particular run going the other way. So that's a run pass option there. Martin Manley, the leading receiver for the Iowa Hawkeyes, six catches, 60 yards, and those six receptions more than every other pass catcher in this game. Weissman up the middle. And look at him move that pile. Picking up an extra eight to 10 yards after contact. Gain of 14. Look at the big man roll. That's just extra effort for Weissman. He has a lot of power. We saw that last year. They have a nice one-two punch going with him and Bullock. That's a lot of weight coming at you. Not only with the offensive line, but with Weissman. Quick offense coming at you right now. And uh, Rock Lemon in the backfield for the Huskies. To keep that for no gain. Northern Illinois said enough of this. We're bringing more people to the ball from the secondary. Injured Hawkeye on the field. Iowa has nice rhythm in their offense right now. We'll get a look at which Hawkeye that is. Injured on the field. 6-19 left in the third quarter. And the Hawkeyes lead 24-17. to It's their center. Yep. Number 68 Number is 68. Brandon Scherf. Oh, Brandon Scherf. Who many to believe to be the next great left tackle here for Iowa. They really like their tackles. They, they cannot afford to lose him. Great player and a great leader on our football team. I believe it was against Penn State last year, was injured. And missed time after that game, and it's good to see him right back on his feet. An Iowa boy, four of the five offensive linemen are from Iowa. They like those homegrown Iowa offensive linemen. 
Good to see Sherp walking off the field. Let's check in again with Danon Hughes. Guys, I got a chance to watch Brandon Sherp come off the field earlier in this game. He seemed to be favoring one leg. You really couldn't tell whether it was just fatigue in one long drive. But it, this injury just looks like a cramp. He grabbed a quick drink as he walked off the field. But he's a key asset in this offense. They can't afford to lose him. Now, remember, like you said, Paul, he and Andrew Donnell on two of three plays got injured last year against Penn State. That leg was the injury for sure. We just hope it's not serious. That's a gain of eight. Kevante Martin Manley now has seven receptions. And the Iowa Hawkeyes were not set there. And I believe that was Jordan Cotton split out to the left. Jake Rudock just got a little antsy here. He's, he got to let, let, let those guys get set. I know he's trying to go fast. 11 players never came to a complete stop. Five-yard penalty. The down remains third. He's trying to go fast. He's been given a fastball play from the sideline, but you still have to look around and make sure your guys are set first. Now, that's the only youth situation I've seen with him today. Yeah, He's I was played gonna, like a veteran except for say, that one I mean, play. A lot of times with someone making his first start, especially an underclassman, those, the, the youth shows up in the decision-making with the pass, and we haven't seen that yet. No interceptions for Jake Rudolph. Big play here coming up on third down and six. Wanted Jordan Cotton. There was some contact, no flag. And the Husky defense holds. That was just good man press defense, meaning that that corner, those DBs are tight on those uh, receivers. That, that's good defensive back play. Defensive back actually beat him to the route, meaning he was ahead of him in his own route. And they're never going to call that play. Marlon Moore, the sophomore, good job in the coverage. You saw Jordan Cotton calling for the flag before he even hit the ground. He was he was sure that he was interfered with, no. but no call. Good defensive play. Sebastiano going to let that one drop, and the Iowa special teams stepping up and making a play. That's off to Jonathan Parker, backup running back for that play. Pinning the Huskies deep, they'll take over on their own four. Wow! Your generator's really quiet! Yeah, it's a Honda EU2000. Super quiet, fuel efficient, and lightweight. Yeah! My generator's really loud! Oh, yeah, no kidding. Oh, yeah! She wants me! Maybe not! Honda EU Series Portable Generators. Lightweight, fuel efficient, and... What was that all about? Very quiet. When the game is over, stick around for the State Farm Post Game Show. In-depth highlights from the entire conference and complete analysis from our Big Ten experts. The State Farm Post Game Show, immediately after the game, only on BTN. it no less real. Time now for today's Game Changer brought to you by the John Deere Gator. Number 15 is Jake Rudock making his first start here for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Third year in the program, had never taken a snap. Done more than just a pretty good job. He's done a real good job here today and also hasn't turned it over. What a debut for him, this young man, with a bright future. And no, most important thing, Paul, no interceptions. 
Rudolph right now, 15 out of 25, 206 yards and one touchdown. As Chuck mentioned, no picks. Jordan Lynch, difficult throw, rolling to his left. To Deron Brown, incomplete. And let's check in on the sideline with Dana Hughes. Well, guys, this offense has stalled for the Huskies in part because their most experienced receiver, Tommy Lee Lewis, is on the sideline. Looks like an ankle injury, has ice on it, is not going to return in the ball game. He is responsible for both Husky touchdowns. Tommy Lee right now, Dana, five catches, 82 yards, and as you said, two touchdowns. That would be a blow to Jordan Lynch if he can't come back. Second down, 10. Tough place to come out for him. Try to, you try to get the first down. At least one. Seen that a number of times. And Anthony Hitchens prevents Lynch from turning that corner. Tanner Miller also in to make the tackle. That's only a gain of three. See why Anthony Hitchens led the Big Ten in tackles last year, Chuck. They've been seeing, seeing that play all day long. They're starting to get a beat on it. And, and Northern Illinois is using all different kinds of formations to get to that same play to try to confuse the defense. But they were not confused there. Third down and seven passing situation. Lynch right now 17 out of 27. 182 yards. The Huskies 5 out of 12 converting third downs. And the Iowa pass rush led by Anthony Hitchens forces the early throw and the incompletion. They brought an all-out blitz. Iowa did. They had one extra defender that they couldn't block. I was surprised Jordan set his feet a little bit better and deliver that strike. He got a little antsy there. He had a guy open in the flat. That's exactly what you're hoping for for Phil Parker when you bring that blitz that some confusion creates a wide open lane. And Anthony Hitchens had a clear path there to Lynch. I don't think Jordan Lynch really knew where to throw the ball high or low, trying right. to throw it underneath the armpit. That movement early. And I believe that one is going against well Northern Illinois. Offense number 47. Half the distance. I know Jordan wanted that one back. That's one of those throws I had, I had him open. For the first down, couldn't get it there. He wants that. He wanted that one back. And I would imagine a month from now, Chuck, that one will feel different. But you haven't been rushed at full speed since last season. It has a tendency to rush you in the pocket in game one a little more than you ought to be. It does. You know, you just—it's hard to simulate pressure in practice. It's hard, hard to do. All coaches are trying to figure out how to do that without touching the quarterback. Devontae Martin Manley, all set to give Iowa good field position here. Excellent punt. He's backed up Good to punt. his own 40-yard line. And he's going to get back inside of Northern Illinois territory. Good punt return by the veteran wide receiver. Weeknights, we invite you to join the conversation on BTN Live. It's the most comprehensive nightly college football discussion from the guys who love to talk about the game. BTN Live, weeknight, 6 o'clock Eastern on Big Ten Network. With another injury update, let's check in with Dana Hughes. Well, guys, the Hawkeye fans can breathe a, breathe a sigh of relief as Brandon Scherf, left tackle, has gone back on the field. Looked like it was just a cramp. He was helped off the field, but he's back in full play now. Jake Rudock, thank you, Dana, with the fake draw, and his hand was hit as the ball was released, and that is an easy interception for the Northern Illinois Huskies. Deshaun Durant from his safety position. Kind of like a center fielder just ran underneath that one and hauled it in. Well, I would try to take a shot here on first down, taking advantage of this field position. A lot of coordinators take shots along pass plays in between the 40s. All right, little play action fake. They had plenty of guys to protect. And making the play there, Chuck, is Ken Bishop, defensive yep. tackle, the senior. Their best player on, def on the defensive line did a nice job of just bull rushing penetrating During the play and causing that interception with his hand up on the Iowa bench. See, he got right on his right Five arm. Penalty at the end of the run. First down. Turned into a punt play Illinois. almost. Ball just hung up there too long and easy interception for Northern Illinois. That's Ken Bishop all the way making that play. Number 93 Bishop familiar with the state of Iowa here. Spent some time at Ellsworth Community College. So that's the first interception for Jake Rudock. And I figured after I said first interception Jake Rudock would be talking about a poor decision. But that wasn't a poor decision. That was just pressure leading to that pick. They had one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. It was a good play call. He was just running a, a simple go route or trying to throw a simple go route to the outside. And Ken Bishop disrupted, disrupted that play, hit his arm. No points yet in the second half. 24 to 17 Iowa, just like it was at halftime. Jordan Lynch to his right, looking downfield. And B.J. Lowry 
was all over Brown incomplete. As I told you, right in the middle of the field is where coordinators like to take a shot, take a long pass down the field. And there was another one by Northern Illinois trying to keep Iowa on their heels. I remember when defensive backs would, would cover a route well. They'd tell the receiver, I just ran that route for you. <laughs> That's exactly what happened there. They're starting to get a good bead on each other right now. There has both coordinators need to come up with some kind of change, some kind of game changer they haven't seen before. Play action to Stingley. Back out to the right side. Anthony Hitchens can't play it any better than that. That's only a gain of one. And the senior linebacker sniffed it out and made the textbook tackle on Maxwell. We've talked about Kirksey all day long. What about Hitchens? They have three really good linebackers to be the strength of their defense all year long. Very savvy football players. There's that low tackling that you're seeing because of the, the crown rule or the target rule. They're all tackling lower now. Ten tackles for the man who had more tackles than every other defender in the Big Ten last year. This is third and nine and under pressure. Lynch gets rid of it. Louder milk is there to make the tackle. And that's only a gain of four. Well, I thought they are going to have a two-play call there, just get some of it back on third down to get a fourth down manageable. They decided to punt the ball instead. Desmond King also in on that tackle, the freshman from Detroit. Defensive coordinator Phil Parker telling us yesterday, keep an eye on that young man. Rod Carey watching his offense come off the field. Punt team out there on fourth down and five. Send a guy in motion on the punt team. Uh oh, little fake here. Oh, a little option fake. And the Huskies have enough for a first down and then some. Fake punts. Leads to Northern Illinois inside the Iowa 10-yard line. Tyler Waddell. Whenever you have a funny-looking punt formation, you can expect a fake every time. I don't know if Iowa recognizes it at all. Especially when they send the man in motion. This is a little option play off the defensive end. Perfectly executed. Great play call on fourth down. Interference. Gets back to what I said before. They the had play. a two play call. Oh. First down. You, you kind of saw that right away well, with the man going in motion. When a guy goes in motion on the punt team, you have to be calling out on your defense hey, something funny's coming. Stay on your man, stay at home. Be as sound as you can. Obviously, it was a play Iowa has not seen before, though. And those, when you get to special teams trick plays, a lot of them work because you, they, they've never seen them on film. 42 yards. And the Huskies now inside the 10-yard line with first and goal. Lynch gives it inside. Iowa defense, as it has been most of the afternoon, strong through the middle there. That was Cameron Stingley. And a gain of two. They keep trying that play up in, the, up in the heart of the Iowa defense, right in the meat of the Iowa defense. It has not been that successful. They're, they're better, Northern Illinois is better when they spread out and attack the edges of the defense, not up the middle. Now second down and goal from the six-yard line. Harris Jr. now the tailback. Lynch going to keep it himself. And the Iowa defense gave him nowhere to go. Dominic Alvis was there. I see Christian Kirksey, Louis Trinka Passat. No game. Christian Kirksey on his birthday already has a touchdown today. He's been sideline to sideline. You saw him there in the running game against Rod Carey's quarterback, Jordan Lynch, but he's also been big in the passing game defending receivers. This is third down and goal now from the seven yard line. Tough to call plays from this part of the field on third down. You got a, usually an end zone type pass. Out to his left. And Lynch under pressure just fires that one away. James Forrest was in. Anthony Hitchens was there. Getting the job done for the Hawks. Smart play by Jordan Lynch. Great pressure. Linebacker scraping off the edge. Jordan just gets rid of the ball. He knows that he's outside the pocket so he can throw it anywhere. Take your three points. Get some points out of this drive. No surprise to see the players making the play for Iowa, number 31 and 44. That's Hitchens and also Morris. No returning BCS conference duel and more tackles as a tandem last year. This is from 25 yards away, Matthew Sims. Get, you, get yourself your field goal here. It saves you from trying to get a touchdown late. 42 yards on the fake punts leads to a field goal to make it 24 to 20. 
Let's check in with Danon Hughes. Got it. Guys, outstanding job by the defense. Bend but don't break. Took the uh, mistake on special teams and actually gained some momentum from that. But I want to talk about those linebackers. You guys are covering Hitchens and Kirksey and Morris. Hitchens has been the guy that has been shadowing J J Jordan Lynch this entire game and has done an outstanding job keeping his eye on him. Even in play fakes, the draws up the middle, the bootlegs, you see number 31 in the shadows of number six this entire game. And Dana, there's not a linebacking core like it in the Big Ten. All three were the top ten in tackles in the conference a year ago. Tacklers one, two, and three on the team. There's what they bring to the table for their senior year. Just an outstanding group of, of young men. They've been together. The, the, the key with these guys is they've been together for a while. Mm -hmm. and they, they, they know, yeah, they know each other very well, and, and they know how, how to play in space. And as we talked to Phil Parker, the defensive coordinator, he's not afraid to put these guys in space against spread teams instead of putting an extra defensive back on the field. And we've seen that with Kirksey guarding wide receivers, and he also explained to us yesterday how they've kind of lightened the load for James Morris in terms of what he has to do in the front seven. Well, they're, 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 they've limited their calls. They've condensed their defense a little bit more to, so they can get the calls in, especially some teams in the Big Ten now. You know, in, in Northern Illinois is doing it today, but there's teams in the Big Ten that are going to a fast-paced offense, so you better limit your calls and make your calls quick defensively. Adam Cox, backup fullback, bringing that one out, 16 yards. And now with the lead only four at 24 to 20, and 107 left in the third quarter, Jake Rudock and the Iowa offense back on the field. Iowa's had some good rhythm in their offense. Don't go away from that. They've been under center quite a bit this game as well. Mark Weissman, the tailback. And he has the ball, cuts it back to the left side. Tackle eventually made by Jamal Bass. Weissman gets by. Inside zone's designed to go from guard to guard. You want to stay on the front side as long as you can, press the line of scrimmage, and go backside at the last possible moment, which he did. Good read of the defense there by Weissman. Rudolph in the last series. Remember that series ended with his first interception caused by the Northern Illinois pressure in the pocket. Weissman again off the left side. Northern Illinois defense is there. I like what Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator for Iowa, is doing right now. He's staying ahead of the chains, Paul. He's he's now in a third and short instead of a third and long. His first, and that goes back to his first and second down calls. No surprise, Chuck, to see that the top three running backs for Iowa, Weissman, Bullock, Kanzeri, they have a combined 30 carries while Rudolph is throwing the ball 26 times. Great balance in their offense. That's exactly what you want, especially with a young quarterback. Third down and one. Play action. Rudock going to take a shot. Almost had Damon Powell. Had him for 49 yards early in the game. And missed him by about a yard. Good play call. Had him open. And that was an almost for the Iowa Hawkeyes as the third quarter comes to a close. The only points in Northern Illinois field goal. Jordan Lynch and the Huskies enter the fourth quarter. Australia, Iowa, 24 to 20. Eating lunch isn't exactly hard work. So why do you feel so tired afterward? Instead of refueled and focused, you're foggy and sluggish. It's that 2.30 feeling again. So how do you get your clear, alert feeling back? Have a coffee, then another? Do this instead. Take one five-hour energy. In minutes, foggy and sluggish is gone. Hello, clear and alert. Five-hour energy. Take it after lunch. Be clear and alert for hours. You guys ready for me to get personal? Yeah. Yeah. My whole life, people doubted me. They didn't know what I had inside here. They didn't see seven grams of protein or six essential nutrients. They just saw a tiny little peanut. But you gotta ignore your eyes. Yeah. Listen to the peanut. Believe in its power. See, I can't put the peanut inside your mouth. Only you can do that. Only you can harness the power of the peanut. Northern Illinois University. Grit. Determination.
Tenacity. We are Huskies. Champions. In the classroom, in competition, in life. We are Northern Illinois University. Learning today. Leading tomorrow. This is more than just your yield. More than a job well done. It's what you were meant to do. And a passion we share for the life of your land, for the life that you love. It's more than just another day. It's your moment. And with Mycogen Seeds, this is just the beginning. Watch All Access Video and reserve your seat in Kinnick Stadium or Carver Hawkeye Arena today by clicking the tickets link on hawkeyesports.com. Part of the Big Ten Digital Network. Weeknights, join the conversation on BTN Live. It's the most comprehensive nightly college football discussion from the guys who love to talk about the game. BTN Live, weeknights at 6 Eastern on BTN. What I love about football is raw emotion. It's like electricity, it courses through your body. The contact, you can go full speed at somebody and really not get in trouble. Right up the middle, goodbye! Your heart's pumping, 80,000 fans cheering for you. If you don't get jacked up to play in front of those fans, you got a problem. The Big Ten Pulse, presented by Micro Essentials, Monday on BTN. Three quarters in the books, Iowa on top, 24 to 20. Jake Rudock had an excellent chance there to make a play. Third down and one. This is an almost to Damon Powell. Everybody in Hawkeye land say, why didn't you run the ball? I love this call by Greg Davis. He had a one receiver route, heavy formate, heavy run formation, took a shot. It's showing the aggressiveness of, the, of his play calling, which is really good. Angelo Sebastiano back deep to receive the punt. And here he goes from the 15. Iowa special teams. Good once again, and that is Jordan Cotton making the tackle. So the Hawkeyes opening up here with the Huskies on opening day, the final day of August, just like they did last year, except that was at Soldier Field, and they won by one point. Here's what's coming up for the rest of September. Missouri State, Iowa State, and then Western Michigan before they open up the Big Ten against Minnesota. I remember when Iowa played Minnesota last week of the regular season every single year. The realignment, the addition of teams, and it's Hawks and Gophers coming up to start the Big Ten season September 28th. The first five games are really important for Iowa and Kirk Ferris this year. Get off to a good start. Stingley up the middle. And that's a gain of five. Jordan Lynch, Rod Carey will take second down and five every single time. Cameron Stingley arrived at Northern Illinois out of Romeoville High School near Chicago as a running back. Jerry Kill moved to the linebacker. Then they said, you know what, let's move you back to tailback. And now he's settling in. And Rod Carey saying he has had as strong a training camp as anyone on the entire team. Almost to the 30-yard line there. Picks up three. Northern Illinois shows you a lot of different formations and motion. It's all misdirection type motion to expand the defense. That's why they're getting these little creases inside on the Iowa defense right now. Third down and two, and it seems like in third and less than five, especially right around this area, they've been running the football instead of passing it. Well, the Hawkeyes have been going to the air on third and short, and that's Cameron Stingley. Wasn't touched until John Loudermill tackled him there out across the 35-yard line. Nice job up front by the Husky offensive line to pick up the first. Boy, Stingley's running well. Staying, staying low with his pads. They've got, again, they're, they're pulling a guard to get an extra hat on the defense, an extra blocker out in front. Iowa right now, they're running right down the heart of Iowa. There's another quick pass. Brindley hauls it in. And we've seen that quite a bit where Lynch out of the shotgun just catches and fires. That time they get four. And as you mentioned earlier, that's kind of just turned into an extension of the running game. That's all it is. We, we always treat it as a run, next to run, but although it's a forward pass, it's a run, really. And it's trying to tire out the defense, get them going laterally to tire them out for late in the fourth quarter. 
Stingley remains the tailback, and he has it once again, putting that head down. Northern Illinois is getting, again, manageable third downs right now. They're staying ahead of the chains. Good play call here. That's a gain of three. Kirk Ferentz, intensity on his face, watching his defense now on third down and three. Leading tackle for Iowa so far, Christian Kirksey, he has 13. Stingley up the middle, going nowhere. Drew Ott, the sophomore defensive end. That dive play is what they keep trying on that Iowa defense. They just don't have enough power and girth up front to make that play happen. And Iowa's all over it. Ott led the charge. Trinka Passat was also there. Dominic Alvis. Drew Ott, the sophomore, was the Nebraska Gatorade High School Player of the Year as a senior in Trumbull, Nebraska. Devontae Martin, Manley back once again after the Iowa defense did its job. Good punt. Manley, fair catch on the 10-yard ten, ten line. 12-01 left. Game one for Iowa and Northern Illinois. The Hawkeyes lead by four. This is the Quicken Loans team. A team dedicated to providing clients with an amazing home loan experience. For three years in a row, J.D. Power & Associates has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction. Because at Quicken Loans, client service isn't everything. It's the only thing. Quicken Loans, engineered to amaze. It's Pep Boys Labor Day Savings Event. Whether you buy one tire for as low as $39.98, buy two, get a free oil change, or buy three and get the fourth tire free, Pep Boys has the lowest prices guaranteed. Life is full of point Bs. Trust the boys to get you there. When the game is over, stick around for the State Farm Post Game Show. In-depth highlights from the entire conference and complete analysis from our Big Ten experts. The State Farm Post Game Show, immediately after the game, only on BTN. In this moment, it doesn't matter if you save money in 15 minutes. It doesn't matter if your neighbor has the same insurance that you do. What matters right now is the quality of your independent insurance agent. Glad you're okay, Sarah. We'll take care of everything. And the company that stands behind them. Thanks so much for your help. No problem. Auto Owners Insurance. You remember their days competing in the conference. Now, the BTN Original Series Forever Big reconnects with these former athletes for a view of life after the Big Ten. Forever Big, featuring Tony Mandrich and Brad Sellers. Premieres Friday on BTN. You can purchase the right to buy face value tickets if your team makes it to the Big Ten football championship game. Guaranteed. For more information, go to btn.com slash team ticks. Strong storm. Z left flank. 18 slant. 499 Oscar. Let's face it, football is complicated. This stuff isn't easy. He runs a 16-yard in cut. A high corner right. route. You're going to pull your guard around. They're going to start inside and read the secondary. Block back with the center. If that's muddy, we're going to outflank and hit this one. In, under, check down. From the pregame show to the final drive. BTN definitely has you covered. Jordan Lynch taking a break on the sideline. His Huskies trailing by four. 12.01 left in the fourth quarter. So he is up against Jake Rudock playing for the very first time. And here's what they've done so far. Equal, he, equal game for both of them. They, they both played very well. Uh, getting, getting back to Jake Rudock, I think he'd be a senior in this game. He's just a first-year first player. And he's staying even with uh, one of the best quarterbacks in the country. He's had a lot more help, Chuck, from his running game. Weissman and Bullock have combined for 28 carries, 131 yards. Northern Illinois tailbacks have only carried it 14 times. While well, Lynch has 19 carries. Damon Bullock carries the football for a gain of two, and he is on the mind of Danon Hughes on the sidelines. Well, guys, you saw Damon Bullock carry that last uh, play, but... They have a nice one-two punch with Weissman and Bullock, and we haven't seen much of Bullock in the second half. 
It's interesting to see him come in this game in this situation. He does a nice job holding on to the ball with the strip there, but he is more versatile for this offense. He can be a great asset for Rudolph. Three steps for Rudolph, plenty of time. Nobody open and fires it incomplete. You see the Iowa offense after that, that running play slow it down a little bit. They're trying to use a little bit more clock. The danger to that, though, Paul, is you get out of rhythm with your offense. There's a fine line there. You want to stay in the rhythm. Don't slow it down too much. Big third down here. Deep in their own territory. Third down and eight. This deep in the territory, their own territory, Chuck. Would, would you trust him to take a shot down the field, or are you going to be conservative? Keep the ball on the outside if you throw the ball. Setting up the screen pass there, and that was extremely well set up, just like you want to see it in practice. And David Bullock couldn't hold on. They had a huge play in the screen game. Good call by Greg Davis. Out, it's a safe play. It's either keep the ball on the outside, and they did that with a screen pass. Good set of the screen, draws the rush. Jake draws the rush to him. He had a lineman out in front. You got to catch that ball. Got to have those. Sebastiano back to receive the punts with his Huskies trailing by four. Missed opportunity there for Iowa. Special teams once again for the Hawkeyes. Coming up with the play, making the tackle is Gavin Smith, back up defensive back from nearby North Liberty, Iowa. Tonight in prime time, Taylor Martinez and his Nebraska Cornhuskers kick off the season against the Wyoming Cowboys. That's tonight, 8 Eastern, presented by Buick on BTN and also BTN to go. It's a game the Huskers won two years ago in Laramie. Wyoming hung around for a little while. Nebraska pulled away late. Let's see how they do tonight in Lincoln against Wyoming. NIU coming out with an empty formation right off the bat. They've been leaning on the run quite a bit here to start this most of the second half. And Lynch being chased by James Morris. Late penalty marker in, but a heck of a play by the senior Morris. James Morris can run. Talking to Phil Parker, he thought he was the fastest linebacker that they had. By a nose, though. They're all, all three of them can run. Morris, the two-time Gatorade Iowa High School Holy Player of the Year. So offense number 37. The penalty is declined. Played running back in high school. You like those guys that played running back and turned a linebacker in college. He played so well at running back, there was a lot of discussion that that might be his spot in college. But showing you the speed right there. That's what NFL guys look for, because they know Jordan's fast. They know Lynch is fast, and he's chasing him down. They have him behind the chains now. Empty backfield for Lynch. Three wideouts to his left. He was looking to his right. Hitchens got there first. Carl Davis finishes him off. Out there to help as well. No game. There seemed to be confusion with the pass pattern. Looked like Jordan didn't exactly know what the receiver was doing there. He wanted to, wanted to launch it, but smartly tucked it instead of throwing a bad, bad pass. Tough spot here for Jordan Lynch in that Husky offense on third down and 14. Three wide receivers to his left, empty backfield. He has two eligible to his right. That'll be smart here with the ball. Hawks bring a bit of a blitz and was it picked off? Yes, it was. BJ Lowry, what senior cornerback, comes up with it. What an effort play. Lowry staying down the field, slow to get up. Yep. Let's see what... Oh. Wow, wow. One hand, full extension. Looked like a center fielder at baseball. I'm sure they'll take another look at that, but it looks like he corralled it there in his left arm. If it touches at all. He get his hand underneath he it. Might have kept his hand underneath the whole time. That's a good shot. Oh, the ball did hit. The ball did hit the ground there. One career interception, and uh, that is ruled incomplete. 
think that total at one at least for now. Martin Manley from his own 19. Gets it back, finds a little bit of room, gets out to the 29 yard line. So an almost pick, excellent efforts by Lowry there. Kirk Ferentz will watch his offense come back out of the field, leading 24 to 20. It's always been a part of me to fight for those who couldn't fight for themselves. Whether on my block or around the world. My name is First Lieutenant King, and I move toward the sounds of those who are in need of help. The few, the proud, the Marines. The age of the oversized luxury car is about to give way to a smarter, more nimble breed. Introducing the all-new Buick Encore, with evolved features like flexible seating for five and IntelliLink. Clearly, the next big thing in luxury is small. Tonight, Memorial Stadium will be electric when Taylor Martinez leads the Cornhuskers' big play offense into a primetime shootout with Wyoming. Tonight at 8 Eastern, presented by Buick on BTN and BTN To Go. The Big Ten Football Game of the Week, tomorrow at 8 Eastern on BTN. A newborn screening test is a test for harmful or potentially fatal disorders that are not apparent at birth. Early detection is vital to ensure that children receive the kind of timely intervention which will prevent disability or possibly even death. Students at the University of Iowa recognized the need to spread this message and produced an educational video for hospitals to ensure proper testing for every newborn. Our goal is to help the greatest number of babies who can have identified disorders receive the treatment and care right away. There was nothing more devastating than learning my son was diagnosed with biotinidase deficiency. Because we caught it early, he has no symptoms. That simple test allowed our child to be healthy. To be a part of something that's been able to change and improve the lives of so many people in the state of Iowa is a wonderful thing. Football on BTN is brought to you by State Farm. For auto home life and banking, get to a better state. 10 07 left here in the fourth quarter inside Kennedy Stadium. The Hawkeyes clinging to a 24 to 20 lead. The offense back on the field. In that excellent balance so far, Jake Grudock in his first start has thrown the ball 29 times. His top two tailbacks, Weissman and Bullock, have combined for 29 carries. Make that 30 carries and some more hard-earned yards for Weisman. And he gets by. This could be Weisman time here in the fourth quarter. Get your big man in there. Eat up some clock. You do have a lead. He's relying on Bob, Greg Davis and relying on receivers coach Bobby Kennedy. How is Jake Rudock down there? How's his eyes? Does he feel good? Get it out of his hands quickly. Dangerous pass. Cotton hauls it in. And he gets it up for Iowa first down, picking up six. Nice throw there. But when you're a coordinator upstairs, Paul, you want to you lose the feel of the game. You want guys on the sideline you can trust, especially when you ask questions about your quarterback. Obviously, they don't mind throwing that ball out there in the fourth quarter with Jake. Got had the big reception early in this game on the well-designed and executed flea flicker. And picks up the first down there. Weissman with open room, first down and then some. Brought down finally by Deshaun Durant, but he gets 15 yards. They're running a little zone read here. Here's a zone read, the quarterback's reading the end. He decides to give it to Weissman smartly. Those are those aggravation plays that Greg Davis was talking about yesterday. We don't want to do a lot of zone read with our quarterback, he said. Just enough to aggravate the defense. Weisman, 16 carries for 87 yards, and a nice pickup there for Damon Bullock as the one-two punch continues at running back for the Hawkeyes. Bullock picks up seven. Good mix of run here. Just one pass, but a good mix of run, and they're going fast. Bullock right back with it. Good cuts out across the 35-yard line. That's a tempo. On second medium is when 
uh, Greg Davis is calling it. Joe Windsor with the tackle there for the Huskies. Rudolph with the quarterback sneak on third down and one has enough for an Iowa first down. We talked about yesterday with, with Coach Davis. He has one word call that gives him two fastball plays in a row. And that one must have been two plays ago. He had one word that he kicks out there with a signal, gives him two fastball plays in a row, good execution. Interesting against Northern Illinois last year, Chuck. It was Wiseman starting at fullback and Bullock at tailback. A lot of injuries later. They're the one-two punch at running back. Keeping those feet going. Good job by the Husky defense to keep that to a gain of three. Now they're slowing down a little bit. Use some clock here. But don't lose the rhythm of your offense. Stay in rhythm. Weissman used to carrying a heavy load after Bullock went down last year. The next four games, he averaged 25 carries per game for 156 yards. And here he is once again. Durant there to make the tackle from his safety position. Weissman picks up three more. Big third down here. Weissman the leading carrier in this game right now. North Illinois brought the blitz there. They brought a, a double linebacker stunt up the middle. Weissman has 17 for 90. And we'll see if he gets it again here on third down and three. Actually, it's Damon Bullock, Bullock. in the game at tailback. Same blitz. Huskies bring that blitz. Bullock out of the backfield, hangs on. Lunges at the end, and he's still going to be a yard short. That's one of the things that really got to them last year on third down situations. They did not have enough pass patterns to get past the sticks. They were thrown too short of the, of the marker last year, and you saw it again just now. I think that's something they still have to work on as the season goes. Mike Meyer from 44 yards out last year from 40 to 49 yards. He was six out of eight. And that one is dead center. Meyer with his second field goal of the afternoon, and Iowa's lead is pushed back to seven. So for the second season in a row, Iowa and Northern Illinois open up by going head-to-head. -head. Last year it was in Chicago at Soldier Field. And the Iowa defense did a nice job of keeping Jordan Lynch contained for most of that game until he breaks free for a late touchdown. James Vandenberg under pressure the entire game as the Iowa offense struggled from start to finish. However, at the end, Damon Bullock, then wearing number 32, puts the nail in the coffin. Tough one. Hard-fought victory, Iowa leaves Chicago 18-17. to Now, Northern Illinois went on to win 12 consecutive games and go to a BCS Bowl, and the Hawkeyes struggled to a 4-8 and season. Two programs went two totally different directions last year. Stay tuned after the game for the State Farm post-game show. And we just saw Jordan Lynch on the sideline. We watched Kirk Ferentz, one of his signature moves during games, taking notes and tucking that back into the pocket. But I think if you follow college football, you know Jordan Lynch led the Huskies to a BCS game last year. You know he threw for over 3,000 yards and ran for over 1,500 yards. Something about those numbers comes alive a little more if you play big in the fourth quarter on the road against the BCS team when you're trailing. With veteran quarterbacks like Jordan, this is where a hey, call it money time. He has the experience. You want to get noticed at the next level? These are the teams you do well against. Dana Hughes on the sideline has more on the Iowa defense. Guys, in 2012, the Hawkeye defense was called to do a lot, especially early in the season. Had two losses. One against Iowa State here at Kinnick Stadium, 9-6, to six, and then they lost the next home game against the Chippewas from Central Michigan, 32-31. In that game, just like this one, they were called on to make crucial stops at the end and could not get it done. We'll see if they'll be able to accomplish that today. All right, Dana, 27 to 20 now, 642 left. Jordan Lynch with time, looking deep. And that's a perfect pass, Sebastiano. Excellent job of hanging on there, going up and getting it. What a veteran throw by Jordan Lynch. Keeping that ball to the outside at one-on-one -on -one coverage. A little slant and go. Creates some space on the defensive back. Great ball placement. There's, there's your veteran throw right there. 27 yards. 
Sebastiano good catch and there he to the left side. That's Brindley. I call that your wide sweep running play. You're just right. throw, you're just throwing it. You're just throwing it. Good blocks by the wide receiver. Just get you get you six yards there. Gain of six. Two pass plays. Good for 33 yards. And the Huskies now inside of Iowa territory. That's three consecutive completions. That one to Brown. And it's good for a Northern Illinois first down. Gain of six. Quick out to the short side of the field. Make the make the throw short if you can. Just one on one coverage and the corner was soft. Easy, easy pitch and catch. Lynch three for three on this drive, and just like that, the Huskies first and ten on the Iowa 37. There's your first run play, and it's to Lynch cutting it back, looking for something. And Dominic Alvis trips him up. Lynch picks up one yard. Good defensive pursuit there. Smart play by Jordan, trying to get just get back to the line of scrimmage and call it a day. Get down in the turf. Just don't lose yardage. Second down nine. Inside of six minutes now. The Hawks leading by seven. The Huskies on the move. Penalty marker thrown as Harris was met right in the middle there. Tanner Miller from his free safety position to make the tackle. During the play, holding offense number 55. Ten yard penalty. Second down. Needs a hold. That'll move him back. Northern Illinois really an impressive drive until that penalty. An injured yeah. Iowa player down there, Chuck, on the 31-yard line. And it's Dominic Alvis who just made a tackle a play ago. Senior out of Logan, Iowa. Started all 12 games last year and a big part of the defensive effort here today for the Hawkeyes. One of their best pass rushers on the team. Had three sacks last year. They didn't have a lot of sacks, but he had three of them. The most of anybody, and he had five tackles for losses last year. They're trying to create pass rush with their front four. You wonder if an injury like that was heat-related, a potential cramp. Well over 100 degrees on the field. It's nice in the second half here. The field has been shaded. But still an extremely warm day. 101 degrees yesterday in Iowa City. 90 degrees of kickoff here today. Miserable for a lineman, especially when you're near 300 pounds. Miserable spot here for Jordan Lynch. Second down at 19. Timing, accuracy, velocity shows it all there to Deron Brown to pick up 11 yards. Smart, smart call by offensive coordinator Bob Cole there. You're not going to get it all back in one shot. Just get some of it back. Just give yourself a manageable third down, which they have right now. Not perfect, but it's manageable. Third down and seven. Fake the inside give. Plenty of time for Lynch. Steps into one. Brown is wide open. Touchdown, Huskies. It looked like... B.J. Lowry there stumbled and couldn't get back outside to the receiver on the outside. He had two receivers coming at him. He just couldn't recover in time. It was a four vertical type play. They just didn't have enough defenders to cover it. Injured Hawkeye down in the corner of the end zone. We got to give a lot of credit, not only to Jordan Lynch, but that Northern Illinois offensive line. You see how comfortable he was back there? Just a veteran, veteran uh, offensive line. They've been together for two years now. And there's Brown, just found himself yep. wide open, did Deron Brown. You see the Lowry there, he just, he covered the inside receiver too far. You want that corner to split the difference when you have two receivers coming at him so you can recover on, on either man. But he, he jumped on the inside receiver too much, left too much room to the outside receiver. B.J. Lowry, the injured Hawkeye, and needed help getting off the field from a couple of trainers. And we'll see if he comes back here when the Iowa defense does return. This to tie the game. Matthew Sims already has a couple of field goals, and now he's perfect on extra points. And we are all tied at 27. Jordan Lynch with time. A perfect spiral and a strike to Deron Brown. He has the touchdown, and we have a tie ball game.
is our Autobahn. Our formula track. Our oval. They can have the asphalt. We'll take everything else. Own the off-road with the Gator that's right for you. See them in action at johndeer.com slash gator. Hurry in to get $500 off select Gator utility vehicles at your John Deere dealer. Who that guy? I don't know. Get caught up in the excitement. Buffalo Wild Wings. More wings, more sports. Hey, who's this? Yeah, I'm married. Does it matter? You do that for me? Really? Yeah, I'd like that. Who are you talking to? Uh, it's Jake from State Farm. Sounds like a really good deal. Jake from State Farm at 3 in the morning? Who is this? It's, it's Jake from State Farm. What are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? Uh, khakis? She sounds hideous. Well, she's a guy, so... Another reason more people stay with State Farm. Get to a better state. There you see it all tied up. A little over five minutes left in the game in Iowa City. Season opener for the Huskies and the Hawkeyes. All tied at 27. Just before the break, Jordan Lynch with time. And an open Deron Brown. Touchdown, Huskies. Lowry jumped on that inside receiver. Allow for Deron Brown to be wide open. Good eyes by Jordan Lynch. See, she, uh, Lowry just couldn't recover to, to Brown. See, he bit on the inside receiver there. He tried to spin, stumbled, couldn't quite get there. Deron Brown, 33-yard touchdown reception. This after Jordan Lynch found Tommy Lee Lewis twice for scores from 40 yards out, also from 21 yards out. Lewis left the game with an injury earlier here in the second half and we haven't seen him back on the field since jordan cotton back deep to receive and what a situation for your young quarterback jake rudock very interesting young player hasn't played before you're deep into the fourth quarter you need a drive what you try to do is keep your passes outside the hash got chooses to bring it out it's out to the 18-yard line. Good coverage. But you try to keep your passes outside the hash, Paul. If you're going to throw it down the middle, throw the post route deep down the middle. Just try, try to stay away from that, that area where, where it's heavy in the defense, about 10 yards, 10 to 15 yards over the ball. Be careful of throwing it in that area. Keep them in the flat, uh, and then work your screen passes if you have some. First down and 10 now for Jake Hudon. 5.03 left and counting. All tied at 27. Right to the air. Rudolph finds his big tight end, C.J. Fedorowicz. He had a touchdown catch earlier in this game, and that time he picks up four. So here we are in Iowa City, the opening game for Northern Illinois and Iowa. Game of huge significance for both teams. Northern Illinois, 12 wins last year all the way to the BCS. Can they have that kind of season again? We're going to find out in the next four minutes and 40 seconds how strong they are. The Iowa Hawkeyes coming off a four-win season. And that's going to be a face mask. Hawkeyes looking to make a statement that this team is different than the one we saw a year ago. Wiseman with the carry. The face mask will be the call here in just a moment. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 93. 15-yard penalty. Easy call there. And I got to think, Chuck, Kirk Ferentz now the kind of situation he would like where it's late in the game, but there's no reason to panic. He can continue to lean on that running game if he wants to. Yes, he can. This is where defensive linemen get tired. And that, that's where you see the face masks, the arm tackles. They stop moving their feet. It's important that they keep moving their feet to get in position to make tackles. From the shotgun, Rudolph going to keep it himself. He has a little bit of open space there into Northern Illinois territory. Gain and I, and I remember Greg Davis telling us yesterday they're going to run it just enough, as you said, to keep that defense aggravated. This, that's an aggravation play. It's not a heavy part of their offense, but they're they're using it at the right time here in the fourth quarter. A little Jordan Lynch right there. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> hey, gain of nine is a gain of nine. Second down one.
Back to the air goes Rudolph. That's Devon Smith. Not a big game, but enough for a first down. Hawkeyes pick up three and the chains move. Dangerous play on second short there. He did check to that play. That's where the head coach, Kirk Fair, says, no, don't check, don't check. Oh, it worked. <laughs> See that soft corner? It's tough to resist. First down and 10 now. Clock ticking, 324. Rudak going back to the air. Late to the sideline and just gets rid of it. And I'm a little surprised to see Iowa passing as much as they are at this point of the game. I am too. Uh, you know, you have a tie score here. You can always go to overtime. I know you're trying to win the game in regulation, but you like to use a little clock here as well because you don't want to leave any clock for Jordan Lynch. See Jake Rudock, that interception really not a poor decision as much as it was the defense of defense there for Northern Illinois hitting his arm when he threw it, but his numbers nonetheless since that pick have gone down. There's Mark Weissman. Northern Illinois defense is there. Rock Lemon in to make the tackle to keep that to a gain of one. As we approach the three-minute mark here, coming up on third down and nine. They brought a corner blitz. Sean Evans on that play. Good defensive call by uh, Jay Neiman. The Northern Illinois defensive coordinator. What's your call here, third and nine in this spot? Oh, I'd, I'd keep the ball on the outside in the passing game or throw a screen pass. Damon Bullock in there as the tailback to replace Weissman. There's a screen. There's a wide receiver screen. Devontae Martin Manley goes up to get it. But the safety, Deshaun Durant, was there to disrupt that right away, and that's just a gain of one. I know the fans don't like that play, but you have a young player out there now that's never been in this situation. You have to be careful what you, what you call because you do have a tie score at this point in time. It's not, you are not behind in the game. So they're likely going to let this play clock run down now at 19 and 18 and punt it away and we'll see what Jordan Lynch can do. And those screens, you just never know. Those wide receiver screens are feast or famine. That could, those could bust for a touchdown. Iowa allows the play clock to run down. They'll take that five-yard penalty and punt it away. As I said, it uh, five yard penalty as we talked about the yesterday. Don remains four. The important thing is for a young quarterback is to learn not to beat your own team before you learn to beat the other team. And that's something that they're doing a good job with Jake Rudock in this game. Angelo Sebastiano, low punts, but Jordan Cotton. Continues his strong play on special teams to make the tackle and the look on Kirk Ferentz's face says it We are all tied at 27 with 148 left in the game Some key plays to show you Jordan Lynch has two touchdown tosses to Tommy Lee Lewis There is the second one that came in the second quarter Jake Rudolph just before halftime kept it himself They took a close look at that play, but yes, it was a touchdown and then just a little while ago in the fourth quarter, Lynch to Brown for another touchdown. He has three touchdown tosses today. And that's how we are all tied at 27. 148 left, Northern Illinois at Iowa in Iowa City. The Huskies have three timeouts remaining, and Iowa has two. Lynch to the outside. Incomplete to bring up second down 10. Just get just getting him in one-on-one -on -one coverage with the weak side, Paul. Just working one-on-one, -on -one, quick uh, out, out routes. Easy throws. But nice uh, nice defense there. But a lot of time for Jordan Lynch and company here. The Kirk Ferris is saying, hey, we're gonna leave it up to our defense. We feel we're better and more veteran over there. Leave it up to the defense. Keep in mind all three timeouts remaining for Jordan Lynch. Plenty of time there. Looking down the field to Brown. The Hawkeyes have that one well covered. Loudermilk there from the safety position. Two straight incompletions. Clock stops and it's third down and ten. Nice coverage there, but Jordan Lynch had a crossing route wide open that he missed. That would have been a huge play for Northern Illinois. Always an exciting time, time late in the game, but especially after a disappointing season going up against the BCS team from a year ago. This is third and ten. 
Stingley met initially and then drops. Who else? Anthony Hitchens in that Husky backfield. Loss of three. Linebacker plays the strong all game for Iowa. That should be. They are the better unit on that defense. And they are, they are stepping forward today, Paul. They had a great day, all three of them. A series of failure on all fronts for Northern Illinois, Chuck. They had two straight incompletions to stop the clock, and then they get tossed in the backfield for a three-yard loss. Iowa calls a timeout, so they, they don't pick up yards. They lose yards, and they didn't take really any time off the clock. I was really surprised, uh, again, with a veteran quarterback, as Jordan Lynch, you try to throw the ball as much as you can anywhere on the field. We have someone like him as opposed to Jake Ruda. So I was really surprised by that play call. They're not trying to throw the ball on a third ten. If it comes to this, the Iowa Hawkeyes with one timeout left, and their kicker, Mike Meyer, last year from 40 to 49 yards, four out of seven. And also from 50, 50 plus, he was one out of one. Devontae Martin Manley back to receive. Heels on his own 46 yard line. for a fair catch. He had a return. He had a return yard. He must be safe. He had good field position. Join Dave Revson, Coach Donardo, and Howard Griffith after the game for the State Farm post-game show. And we have 124 left in Iowa City. Jake Rudock, how about this situation? Had never taken a snap, let alone made a start for the Iowa Hawkeyes. His first college experience plays pretty well and finds himself against a team that won 12 games a year ago. First down and 10, all tied at 27 from his own 45. He can breathe a little easier because he has field position. One time out remaining. Oh, and he's picked off. Jimmy Ward, the star safety for the Northern Illinois Huskies, picks it off, takes it down to the 30-yard line. It looked like they ran a curl flat. He might have had the curl open. He went to the flat. It's a safe call. He just underthrew it, Paul. He threw it behind the receiver. That's just a physical mistake. Well, he's made so few today, yep. and what a costly one. Jimmy Ward led the team in tackles a year ago, an all-conference performer. Coming up with the play of the day so far defensively for Northern Illinois, Devontae Mark Manley almost punched that ball out, but Ward hung on. If you if you would have waited a, a touch longer, he had to curl out opening up against their man coverage. That's, that's a tough situation. First down in Santa Lynch from the Iowa 30. Stingley running top down to the 21-yard line. That's a gain of nine. Now Northern Illinois can just play clock ball, get in position for the field goal to win the game. They really don't have to be in a hurry. They, they probably feel like they're in position already for a field goal. You like to get the ball to the middle of the field, though. That would set up Matthew Sims, the kicker for Northern Illinois. Inside of 40 seconds now, all tied. Jimmy Ward interception setting up Jordan Lynch to hand off once again to Stingley. Dominic Alvis makes the tackle, but they get inside the 20, and that's a Northern Illinois first down. This is where lack of timeouts for Iowa hurts you. Or you can only have one left here. Love to have all three. This is where it catches up to you. Northern Illinois right now on the Iowa 19-yard line. That would be 36-yard field goal attempts. Matthew Sims today is two for two. Made one from 47, made one from 25. It's expanding out my Northern Illinois. Their timeout, 30 second timeout. It's timeouts to save time for your offense, not necessary to ice the kicker. It's to say it's to have timeouts to save time for your offense. It's feeling like a little bit of deja vu for Iowa fans, a feeling that they're familiar with from last year, and they didn't like one bit in the close games. Iowa involved in a handful of games, three points or less. In fact, look down at the bottom there, 2012. Six times in games with that situation, and they only win two out of four. It works on you mentally, Paul, as a team. You get in that situation, you start having a number of those over time, then 
you get in that situation again, and you start to feel like, oh, is this going to happen again? They have to find a way to win some of these so they can get that confidence momentum going the other way. So Matthew Sims, number 99 last year from 30 to 39 yards out. He was two for two. He's also two for two today. We'll let you watch and listen as the Huskies attempt to go up by three. Never a doubt for Sims right down the middle. Four seconds left, and Northern Illinois leads by three. Uh, it's just too bad how it turned out uh, after that interception. The, the way Jake's been playing, Jake Rudock's been playing. Nice, nice kick here right down the middle. Never a doubt got all of that one. Had the distance, had the accuracy. Rod Carey. The former Big Ten player, the center at Indiana, likes it. Kirk Ferentz does not. And Northern Illinois goes up 30 to 27. Yeah, Jake Rudock, two interceptions in the second half, Chuck. The second one, really the only one you could point to, was a poor decision. Jimmy Ward, we were told all week leading in, everything we knew about this Husky defense, Jimmy Ward is the best player we have. And he made the best play of the game. He did. And big players. Big time players make big plays when it counts. Jimmy Ward certainly did that, along with Jordan Lynch as well. They are a confident team. You know, you come off a of championship years, two in a row, the Orange Bowl, even though they lost the game, they're in the Orange Bowl. You have confidence throughout your program. It can carry over to the next year and the year after that. And that's what they have going on in, uh, in Northern Illinois right now. The Huskies coming off just an unprecedented season. They've been conference champions, but for the very first time in back history, they sent the team to a BCS ball. They're now seconds away from a win in Iowa City. Uh, the Hawkeyes just take a knee, so three seconds left. They'll have time for, for the obvious play. Take one shot at it. And that's the final hope remaining for Kirk Ferentz and his Iowa Hawkeyes here this afternoon. You almost rather take just do the hook and ladders, you know, just try to keep it keep the lateral game going, like the Cal Stanford game, the famous Cal Stanford game, instead of taking a knee there. You have one play. Look for a hook and ladder instead of a, a hail mary. Hail mary is really not going to help you. Jake Rudock comes out onto the field after Jordan Lynch followed up the Jimmy Ward interception on the last series, just kind of managed the offense, made sure they got in the middle of the field. And with 10 seconds left, Matthew Sims kicked that 36-yard field goal to make it 30 to 27. Look, when I say hook and ladder, look for a short, tight catch, and then keep the ball alive. Final play of the game, right Rudock. They've got to keep it alive here. It's a wide open Don Shumpert. Ball's off the ground, and it is scooped up by Rudock. And he pitches it back to Doozy, and the ball eventually goes out of bounds, and that's how it ends. The Northern Illinois Huskies made it to a BCS Bowl game last year with 12 wins. They have one win this season, and what a huge win it is coming to Iowa City and knocking off the Big Ten's Iowa Hawkeyes 30 to 27. Final play here, we check it out. There was there's a moment of hope for the Hawkeyes, but right. eventually, ball's on the ground and out of bounds, and that's it. It's a good call. You just got to keep it alive here as best they can. They had a chance. They outflanked the defense here. They had numbers. Those are hard plays. Very rare, but hats off to Northern Illinois. They played well, and they played well down the stretch when it counted. Huskies jumped out to a 10 to nothing lead. They saw that lead evaporate. Iowa led most of the game. But then Northern Illinois hung around and late. They go ahead 30 to 27 as Matthew Sims goes three for three for the Huskies. The 36 yarder wins it at the end. Jordan Lynch also a big game, 25 out of 41, 275 yards, three touchdowns. He did not throw an interception. That's it from Iowa City here inside Kinnick Stadium for Chuck Long and Dana Hughes. I'm Paul Burmeister. Enjoy the rest of your evening. The Huskies win here 30 to 27. 
Yeah. It's season opener for the first time since 2000. We welcome you back in to the State Farm post game. Dave Revson, Jerry DiNardo, and Howard Griffith. What do you take from Iowa's loss? Really tough loss. I mean, there's losses and there's, and there's tough losses, and this is a tough loss. And one of the reasons is it looked like, for the most part, the Iowa team really had made some improvement from last year. And I think there was a lot of good in this. And it's going to be hard to get to because it's so disappointing. But I think mistakes really at the end hurt them. Uh, without a doubt. And you look, go back to the turnovers. They lost the turnover battle 3-1. Uh, to one. They had two interceptions and one fumble. They just aren't good enough right now to be able to overcome three turnovers, even if they're at home. And it's too bad, in particular, from Iowa's point of view, that it was Rudock who threw the interception that, in essence, set Northern Illinois up for the game-winning field goal because there is certainly some hope there at the quarterback position. They were uh, well over 100 more total yards than they averaged last year they had in this game. They basically were last year's average at halftime. I, I think there's hope everywhere. I, you know, I know that's going to be hard for the Iowa fans. It'll be hard for the Iowa players and the Iowa coaches. But from our perspective, it just looks so much better, so much improved. Uh, I agree, Reverend. It looked like the curl was open on that on that interception, Howard. Young quarterback, you're going to live through those yeah, things. And you're trying, remember, you're trying to uh, manage the clock as well. So I understand why he went to the flat if he had just held on for just a split second later. But I thought it was some good play calling up to that point obviously you know they have to continue to execute and get better but I thought uh, coach Davis did a nice job of mixing running pass and some high percentage passes as well I mean over 400 yards and congratulations to Northern Illinois they're, they're absolutely no absolutely they're, they're a very good football really, team very really good, good team it's the first time they've ever beaten Iowa in 10 all-time meetings first time they've won a season opener on the road since 1983 when they went to Kansas and won so absolutely look that's a great team just for Iowa fans, I think it feels eerily familiar. Now, 13 of their last 18 decided by a touchdown or less, they have lost. Let's update you on Penn State. That a game that went down to the wire as well. A little bit better result for the Big Ten team here as Drew Allen is picked off by Trevor Williams. We're not a very experienced quarterback group for Penn State, but Williams coming up with a nice pick. Complete highlights post-game analysis of that one coming up a little bit later in the show. We will also update you on the rest of the day in the Big Ten, including Ohio State's not as quite as overwhelming a performance as people expected against Buffalo. We'll show you what Urban Meyer's team did. Stick around. Post game on BTN is brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings, your destination for Big Ten Network games. Yeah, I'm married. Doesn't matter. You do that for me? Really? Yeah, I'd like that. Who are you talking to? Uh, it's Jake from State Farm. Sounds like a really good deal. Jake from State Farm at 3 in the morning? Who is this? It's, it's Jake from State Farm. What are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? Uh, khakis. She sounds hideous. Well, she's a guy, so... Another reason more people stay with State Farm. Get to a better state. Why does Bo Jackson use 5-Hour Energy? The reason I take 5-Hour Energy is because it gives me everything I need to get me over the hump. I don't have the energy that I used to have. I tried one right before going out golfing with some buddies. We only played 18 holes, but I could have played 36 that day. Being in the business world now, you're always running somewhere. If I need some pick-me-up, I get a 5-Hour Energy. Gets me through the day. That's all I need. I'm Bo Jackson, and I use 5-Hour Energy. If you're one of the lucky winners of the Quicken Loans Bring It Home Sweepstakes, we'll make a mortgage payment for you. Yep, it's that simple. Every time...